Bam. Welcome, welcome back <laughs> to Black Wrestling. Now, salute to the squads, guys in the earths out there. Um, spoiler alert. We're live to tape. So it's live while we record this. And this is live for the people, but it's 4th of July. Get to get you. Charlemagne, are we live? We, we should be. We should be. Um, nah. So I know this week has been busy. I've been busy myself. This one up here, Miss Mimi. I I because I'm 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 talking about, you know, things gonna be going on in the show. And I mentioned, hey, we got predictions this week. Oh, we do? <laughs> and it's not, this ain't, this, this isn't like the, uh, this isn't an extreme rule show in like 2011 or something like, this is Yeet in the Bank. That sounds so X-rated, but okay. X-rated. I'm sitting in, I'm sitting I'm sitting in an extreme rules chair right now. I don't know where you're from. I got crazy. One. You mentioned extreme rules. I got one from a couple of years ago. But no, I'm saying you you remember that era where like that PLE would come out. You ain't gotta watch that shit. Mm -hmm. I find I'll find out what happens at the monthly pay for WWE wrestling show tomorrow night. They'll show everything on Raw. Mm -hmm. But you do the buckle. Oh, I didn't. I wasn't, you wasn't even around. on you the wasn't buckle. Around. I forgot. Sorry, now, I'm so sad. DDM, you want to talk about a short show? <laughs> buckle was about to be done at seven forty. <laughs> but that's what they always do. That's what they always do. Buckle. What? The, not the thing was is I ended up. Somebody said something about. Uh, <laughs> there was a comment about. I don't know if people saw the the issue with. Uh, spoiler alert! If you didn't see. AW Forbidden Door, uh, Will Ospreay lost to Swerve Strickland, and uh, a couple days I'm starting to talk really? wrestling talk way early. Yeah, he he lost, and a couple days after, I think it was a Fightful Select report came out, and they said that uh, they I don't want to say they were like cleaning things up or caping or whatever, but they were like, look, let me get the report. They said, just so y'all know. Yeah, sources within AEW and then close to Osprey confirmed to uh, Sean Ross Sapp that Osprey, uh, it was Osprey who reached out to higher ups within AEW, noting his desire to put Strickland over. A longtime friend of Strickland's, Osprey wanted to rid of the belief that Swerve's title reign was merely a placeholder until he was supposed to get the belt at a Wembley Stadium at All In, which has been the because he's from the UK and they do the UK show. Everybody thought he was going to win the title at the UK. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, it, the writing's on the wall, but that's what pro wrestling people do. So, uh, what's that nigga name? Slick. Slick got on the, yeah, I mean, was talking about, Oh, well, that's Slick the fuck on in a minute. Mm -hmm. He, that's what he said. He said, that's the media. The media don't need to be asking those questions. Mm -hmm. I said, brother slick. I had to, I'm, I'm like, brother slick. I, I understand what you're saying because I, I, I got when I read the report, I was like, that look, it looked kind of white savory. Like I don't, I don't know if I needed him to come out and say or have a report come out this quick and say, hey, uh, the British man made sure that he put his back on the on the mat on purpose to so the black man ain't got to look a certain way or whatever they wanted to be. I was like, I understand what I understand. Didn't that you know, you're, I, I don't, I don't know. Didn't that happen with Kofi Mania too, though? Loki come out and say, "Well, Daniel Bryan wanted to." Isn't that the Loki? I don't really? like it. I don't like it. I don't think. I, honestly, I don't know if that's necessary on, on either count. I when 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 the person wins the title, if you want to have that conversation, get that shit to me in the documentary. Give it to me like they usually do three, four, five months later when the actual news gets confirmed or whatever. Like I don't need it that week or like two weeks later because it, it looks, it feels away, but. Slick was like, you don't need to be ans asking these questions at all to the me for the media to be doing that because they perpetuate these stories. And I said, Slick, you got to remember, those, they may only have a couple questions with these people. Mm -hmm. If they ask Will Ospreay a question about the match, and that's the response that Will Ospreay gives you for that match, or whatever story that they're putting out there, you either print it or you don't have a Will Ospreay story. I mean, you, you, I, I, you can't fault the media. I think, like... This one, it says, like a number of people have said, if there's certain optic, optics or certain uh, situations that you don't want out there, 
you there's probably a certain way you should present the information or make sure that people aren't fanning any flames and clearly that's not being done but and will osprey is one person who uh is that he definitely gets in there and wants to speak his mind so you just you either got to train him or not worry about it do you believe it do i believe that will osprey purpose i they they put the long time friend thing and i wouldn't be surprised i i it feels weird reading that he's like out going out there trying to prove a point to like again that if that if this is true i don't want to hear about it let him do that for that locker room and then hopefully his example can push whatever you know interest that they want throughout that that locker room um my could... initial reaction was really and i just left it at that and then when you came in and said uh, you know fifel said that's when i was like okay so i i think i'm with you it should have never been said it feels kind of press releasey it feels very press releasey <laughs> Here's my thing, though. Uh -oh. We wouldn't have to. That wouldn't have to be said if that's not what people mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. Like that's the reality. Like we're, we're like, yeah, he didn't have to say it, but the reality is that's what people was thinking anyway. Right. That's right. Just like bash, bash in Berlin. Yeah, it's like it's not. It's the thing is like we we and and I'm not even going to say this is Swerve's fault, but when you have a lack of investment in story a lack of investment in the product overall where it's kind of like at a lull a little bit it's in a, it's in a it's on a downside mm -hmm. um these are things that people are going to think and the real osprey had to say no but also too real osprey is british when you look at british culture um how british people communicate how they talk they're very matter of factly they're very direct and they're not going to date like americans are so obsessed with pr yeah and the rest of the world just does not give a shit about that they don't like sugar coat shit. like and the reality is this he would have had to say that if swerve felt like a stronger champion the reality is he don't so that's why he said what he said because if we didn't if if swerve felt like the man like you never have Ro nobody saying that about Roman Reigns. Oh, Roman oh, Reigns. Oh Jesus! I... You never had right, Roman. Roman's, Roman's an outlier though. The one thing I heard this week is I was listening to uh, I was listening to one of them shows and one of the talking heads, and they alluded to uh, it being um, like Swerve being looked that way because he was black. Like they didn't say it, but oh, that he needed was, some type of right. And it, so people are saying, you know, it's quiet for the transitional champion niggas now. And yes, and they, you know, they had, they, they had the match they had. And then, you know, because I, I, even last week or the week before, I think I saw online the old clip of them niggas in a match and two step and dancing and all that. Yeah. So, I mean, that really kind of starts to tell this story. Mm -hmm. But, the thing I said from the very first presser that, that Osprey did was when they put a microphone in front of his face and he doesn't have a story to tell as far as, you know, storyline and, and pro wrestling, mm -hmm. he's straight from the hip nigga. Like, he's he going to yeah. tell him, he's going to tell him what he think. Yeah, yeah, he's going to keep it real. It's you interesting. Know, I just feel like at the end of the day, um, and I don't know I'm going to take a hit for this, but what the hell. Uh -oh. At the end of the day. Get your comments ready. It comes down to, like, Will Ospreay saying what he's saying. He didn't say anything wrong. The reality is this. You know who we should be looking at? We should be looking at creative and, this, and, and, and Tony for not building, not having Swerve feel that way. I mean, also, too, Swerve plays a part in that, too. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so let me, and, ask you, and, let me ask you a question, then. Let me ask you a question though. If if that's the case, did Swerve feel out of place in the main event? I mean, he's the champion, so the champion should be there, right? So I don't I don't feel like but no no, that's fine. But if you slap the the, the, the god dang championship on Miz and he's in the main event, you I don't care if he's a champion or not, nigga, you should have been like 
before intermission or you should have started the show nigga i don't want you at my main event it's this like it's like how they had at um at the uh, nxt joint at at uh mania weekend where they had you know the the, the championship didn't need to oh main I see event. yeah yeah you see yeah, what yeah. so my question is did swerve feel out of place in the main event we have is it cuz cuz ain't here because we ain't never talked about this nigga that this much well, i was i was I, i've been i've been chuckling <laughs> to myself but i i wasn't even trying to get into all this this early and again ddm this is what i was saying you talking about it, it this is black wrestling podcast ain't no it's an early night when it's one nigga doing the whole show i did that before it's like a 20 minute pod trust me i don't like doing it um nah i i don't uh, to answer fam's question i don't think it's that swerve may not feel like he's in that main event because they've done he's been wrestling within that left for about a year now i think you know roughly about it just whenever the swerves house shit really started uh taking off he's been moving towards that spot but like all the shit with adam page and whatnot i think what which ended up hat was up which isn't over fact well, exactly exactly that he's he it's got to be it's got to be coming back soon he's not been around for a minute Th there was too much shit going on and i think part part of that shit during his reign people was trying to figure out what mercedes monet was doing during his reign you also got okada and will osprey what regardless of like in a lot of them weeks you would get a swerve strickland match to open a dynamite and then it was like that 8 30 9 o'clock 9 30 hour was the will osprey match they did it like two three weeks in a row and then he won the title and he's just been a part of the show i'm and i'm not saying that they don't treat swerve like a champion because when he again he, he's wrestling at the end of the show and when, when when it's time for the, him to defend the title and let let they let the AEW talking heads talk it. They're calling that one of the best main event ma pay per view matches in AEW history. I've not watched the whole thing. I I, I I can't say boo about that. But I think there's been so there's been Tony Khan shit going on, the Jack Perry shit going on. Um, outside of all this, there was a whole forbidden door. I don't, I didn't even count how many titles ran in and out of that UBS arena that night. I think he's been, it, it was not a, it's not a good time to try and establish like the, Damian Priest has been given more time to be out there as like a world champion than Swerve Strickland is on shows where there's a lot going on. I think it's just too much shit. So basically, it's, I agree. What you're, saying, what you're saying, Kyle, in a very nice way. Is that Swerve Strickland is not a star? Uh, I, I wouldn't say not a star. I would say, to go back to Fam's question, I don't think he is, I don't think it's about being a, in the main event, just like Cal said. I don't think it's about being in the main event. I think overall, he just does not feel like a champion. And I didn't think about all those things because I don't really watch the product with, um being objective watching it i'm watching it subjectively right. so i don't yeah, that's real that's how honest it is listen <laughs> it is what it is so when you point out all these tick tick ticks yeah he doesn't feel he doesn't feel like a big deal we're not talking about him yeah. we're not because but i think that's on him i don't think that's on creative if creative doesn't have anything to, for, for you, you take matters into your own hands. You've been in the business long enough to say and do what you need to do to bring visibility to yourself, to basically quiet the noise and bring yourself to the forefront. But then it does go back to what DDM is saying is that when you can't, when you're unable to do that, mm. then your stardom becomes questionable to some aspects. And the thing is, like, and to counter that, like, I don't want to blame creator totally, but, like, I look at somebody yeah. like Dajak, who mm. did not get good creative, per se, or didn't have the full attention of creative. Right. And I think Dajak is awesome. I personally am a... He did a good job of making people talk about him. Yep. Mm. Regardless if he had bad creative or not, people were talking about him, even if it was false narrative, right? People were talking about him. He, he did what he had to do in the ring, and it still wasn't enough for them. Right. So may, maybe to... This? Isn't there a weird story about him leaking stuff, and that's really why they got rid of him? 
I didn't hear that. Talk this week. I've been disconnected, so I don't know. I didn't. I didn't see. I could check the whole entire chat. But the one thing I will say before we get out of the uh, the the championship conversation is, yeah, he definitely had the biggest pyramid hat in the backpack rapper cipher. What I'm saying is, Mm -hmm. Swerve did what the AEW niggas come to see, like he was supposed to. Like they them niggas, they 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 had one. I and I was that's what I was gonna say. I think maybe what needs to happen right now is the opposite of that. Maybe Swerve needs to now. It, if they're calling him the world champion, putting on the premier pay per view matches in that organization, maybe he needs to start thinking about the other parts of his presentation. You that's know, right. is, is he cutting memorable promos? Is he, you know, doing those, uh, does he have an ill vignette idea that, you know, is going to, you know, make people make it, make them look at, look at him a different way. Like, uh, the Gresham stuff with the octopus on, on, uh, TNA. And like, I, I don't know. And I think it goes beyond that as well. He does have this stink on him that he feels like if he's, um, you know, if he's solely identified as a black wrestler, that mm-hmm. he's kind of like, you know, he's stuck in this box. I think once he embraces that, um, I think things would change a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I just think that right now, people don't have a, a positive narrative. His own people doesn't don't have a positive narrative on him right now. And I think he needs to turn that around. Really, mm. I, you yes. know, I, I hear that, Mimi. I just didn't know to what extent it was impacting his reception, and it's like weird to me because, like, I understand wanting to be able to perform in all arenas, but you look very black. Everything about your look, like, the no shade. Apollo Cruz looks more all American, and I'm not a black wrestler than Swerve Strickland does. Mm. Hey man, I, the only thing that the, only, the thing is kind of confusing about this conversation though is when you look at that arena, when he come out, they turn up. Yeah, they're all turn. That's all it. Leaves. That's white it boys. though. But the, and think- the and the white grandmas. But like it's like mm-hmm. I don't want to say it's WWE WCW, but I mean you know if you got if you got a song that's over, and the because CEO. Until until they started booing her Sunday night for whatever reason, when that CEO cut song, and if you go to the arena, then people are gonna chant that song. They're gonna chant whatever they're supposed to chant. And I don't know if that's I don't know if that's I hate to say use the word. Is that I don't know if that's tribalism. I don't know what that is, but it feels like they get into the shit they're supposed to be getting into. This I think it's tribalism. Mm. Because they want what I do appreciate about AEW fans, they like to make sure that you know they love <laughs> AEW, <laughs> you know, especially live. Like, they want you to know, yeah, you talking shit about us, but we live over here. But what they do also let sink in is when they they get tired real quick. The, it... We are so the hype. Out. I can't wait down to very fast. Where we going with this? Is that what's going on at Mercedes Monet? Yes. Oh, we gonna go here now. <laughs> uh, well, I'm I'm asking the question, but I just watched that match in particular, and it was interesting to see because I mean, this is kind of this is kind of the conversation we're having right now. She walked into that ring. They were chanting CEO. She was smiling. They was doing the, I have an idea of what I think turned the crowd, and I think it's pretty perverted. But whatever the case may be, once that thing happened, it go was. Don't go, go and say it. I don't know what the move's called. She, I saw Stephanie Vacker. Vacker. They, they pronounce her last name three different ways. She got a move where she takes Mercedes. They're like both on all fours. And she. She has Mercedes head in like her shins and she's bouncing her butt and legs up and then slamming her head into the mat. She did the shit like six, seven times. I'm pretty sure I heard the crowd going up for that. This is a W too many pictures of people taking pictures of a sky blues, butt in front row for me to not think there's some horny horn balls in there. But after that, it was fuck those Celtics. 
I think it was fuck those Red Sox. Whenever she and and then it was whenever she was getting moves over on Stephanie, it was booze. I think that it's. Mm. I'm gonna let y'all finish. I mean, there's other. There's also other things about the match. I. I don't think it's the match. I just think yeah. that it's just it's it just been a trajectory of things, and I think that you know I just really want to preface this that I look at pro rest. I I do have fandom for certain talent, but. When it ain't hitting, it ain't hitting. Like, I'm not going to sit here and just be like, the big dog was the bee's knees of 2015, 16, and 17. I'm not going to sit here and say that. Was I still fanning the bullshit? Yes, I was fanning the bullshit because he was working through those things. Mm -hmm. But I don't think a lot of people look at pro wrestling in that lens. And I think when it comes to Sasha Banks, because she has such a long history and such a um, she's still very young and accomplished so much that I think people are afraid to say certain things, you know, and I think that she is one of the, one of the best wrestlers in the world, women wrestlers in the world, because you need to identify yourself as, um, I, I personally believe that you need to personally, you need to categorize yourself before you get to that position you, you get to that position and yeah. i think what has always had me in a little like huh is she never wanted to be the best woman's wrestler she always wanted to be the best wrestler mm. and i think that needs to be embraced before anything else mm -hmm. so i think when they when you 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 have all these achievements and everything and people go up for you and she, mm -hmm. her fans go up for her all the time and this going in i wanted it to i wanted the narrative to stick uh -huh. but everything just seems like it's nobody really wants to say anything but it's not hitting well because it, it I, I and think... even the wrestling is great <sighs> But it still didn't turn anything around. This this match. Well, I, some people, some of the the, the chorus of uh, boos were from people who were looking at this match as probably a, a meh performance from her, especially in regards to like bo botches and, and some of the in the in the finish. There was some some I stuff as it. well. But uh, I I think you, it's hard to say it's not hitting when they've invested so much. Like she was yeah. everywhere last week she nessa was in, interviewing her i thought it was a rosenberg interview nah she got the three o'clock spot at, at, at hot 97 or whatever, whatever the afternoon drive she was everywhere talking to everybody but i heard her say she was talking to shane mcmahon she was saying wwe was trying to uh, they were booking her for house shows when she could have been filming for the mandalorian she there was like so she was talking about people saying she was unsafe after after the soraya situation about six seven years ago like there was she was that. I didn't think that that was fair. They that when that's what she that she said it, it sent her into a depressive state. But I I mentioned all that to say they're they're trying to get that return on the investment. It's hard to you can't you can't be that real when she's about to be two belts Monet and and about to start was, feuding yeah. with Britt Baker. She is right now, and she's it, I th we're recording this during Dynamite. They're probably gonna advance that storyline tonight they've got a there's a, a, a two belt monet celebration and Britt baker's supposed to also be there i mean Here, the, 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 the truth of me the truth of the thing is is sasha banks whole career mercedes monet whatever you call her hmm. <clears throat> she's never been <clears throat> great as the good guy right right her right. best stuff i mean in ring you know you she, she, she's fairly, you know, I mean, you can't really say much about Emring, but character wise, she's only like really been entertaining as a heat. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm, it felt like this is the way they've been going. You know what I mean? She felt heelish against Willow, um, of course. And then this was 
Forbidden Door is a weird thing, right? Because it's a thing that it's happens, and they let yeah. title they let title changes happen, but yeah, like it's like a, a house show that count, but is 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 other niggas that get to come to the barbecue, and but this isn't listen. Two belts, Monet ain't a good guy thing. And it, I, I hope I hope they lead into her being a heel. Well, I guess what I was you're ready to say. I absolutely agree with Fam on this one. Go <laughs> fair. Um, but uh, I um. I think that um, this is definitely getting ready to be a heel heel run for Mercedes, right? And I agree with Fam and that she is a heel. And I think no, I don't know this lady personally, but something about her energy just screams she's a heel in real life. And <laughs> yeah. it's, it's something about this lady that just screams I'm a heel in real life. I've never, and, I, and like I say, I want to preface that I don't know this lady. I don't know Mercedes Bernardo from a can of paint, but from the interviews from fan reactions, interactions, things like that. It's just giving me, this is a heel in real life and she plays a heel and this is why it works for her. Mm. Some people are method actors. Some people can can play any role you put in front of them. She's definitely a method actor. She got to live what she <laughs> got. Okay? And um, the thing is this too, um, with the return of Brittany, um, first of all, she looked the fuck good. I don't care what nobody say. You can say what you want. That's WWE quality look right there. And and that's just the reality. She looked the fuck good. Like Shawn Michaels. Brittany. <laughs> Whatever. She looked the fuck good. When she came out there and they gave her the good pyro. Mercedes had pyro. Yeah, they but did. Brittany had pyro. Yeah, okay. They did that. And um when she came out and being a person who when I was watching AEW very heavily, it was during Britt Baker's run when she right. had storyline her and Rebel and, you know, um, all of those girls. And I know everybody does not love Britney, but I believe in Britney. And I think that Britney does good work. And that's just the bottom line. Is she the best wrestler in the world? No. But overall, when I look at everything, she's good enough in the ring. And sometimes she's really good in the ring, especially the match with her and the bunny. Um, but Britney is going to, Britney is the level of talent that Mercedes needs to have. The rest of those girls, and I don't want to throw a whole locker room under the bus. Yeah. You have um, Tony Storm over here. I'm sorry, Tony, but your belt is about to be the number two belt because with Britney coming back and Britney and Mercedes going at it, Mercedes gets to get in her heel bag. This is about to be very fun. I might actually tune in this time. Oh, shit. It's you know? Right. Right but now. Britney, Britt Baker is the level of talent. Number one, she's going to get Mercedes' ass on that mic because Britney... On the mic, it's good. It's one of the few so that's what I was trying to figure out. Like when you say she's the talent that um, she's gonna, she would have me. I go straight to the in ring, and mm -hmm. so I don't think that Brick Baker is great in the ring. But mm -hmm. character wise, because she's not good in the in the ring, it's not that I wasn't. No, I wasn't receptive of the character because mm -hmm. I just felt like. But you're not even good in the ring. So, but then when I saw Chelsea Green, and I kind of feel like maybe they might mimic each other because they are Damn. friends ish. So I kind of felt like, oh, okay. Never mind. Because the character supersedes the in ring, maybe you can be like, like me. Like, oh, I love Chelsea Green. Mm -hmm. I know that she's minutes. not good, but I love Chelsea Green. So I, but then I don't want Britt Baker to go over on Mercedes because it just she wouldn't has, make sense. It's going to happen. Has to. She it's has to. Happen. The reason why she has to, because you can love Mercedes down, but Britt Baker, no shade. When it comes to that women's division, she is the girl in that division. She's the girl that bought, I'm not going to say, she bought eyes. Like when you were, when I was watching AEW when it's first peak, because I don't want to put a company into the ground. But when I was watching AEW during, during its first peak, Britt Baker was getting reactions on level with the Chris Jericho's, on level with um, the John Moxley. She was right up there with them yeah. in, in crowd reaction. Like I said, that match, I believe it was the, with the Bonnie, the blood match yeah. uh, that they had with the tax and shit. The feud that she had with Thunder Rosa was Thunder really, Rosa was another one. Yeah. Um, when Britt had that belt, that belt was desirable. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's just the reality. Is Britt, you know... Um, Serena D even a ring? No, 
But guess what? People were talking about her. People were talking about her. You know what I'm saying? She's good enough. Like, I feel like Britney in the ring with Mercedes because Mercedes is really good in the ring, right? And Britney is sound and sufficient enough that I feel like Britney's going to give, Britney and Mercedes will both give the character in the matches Mm -hmm. that story needs to tell the match needs to tell right Mercedes can handle the technical proficiency of it and it'll be really fun and also too what they're doing low key which might get viewers back is no matter how much Mercedes want to say that she's a global bitch that people are going to be looking at this as WWE versus AEW mm-hmm. oh. it is that's the bottom line. Mercedes needs to understand. And she probably will block me on Twitter or whatever. But girl, you are a WWE product. That's the reality. And people are going to look. You can go to these other promotions and do well. But you are a WWE product. You are tied to a faction of women who are iconic and mm-hmm. are the Hall of Famers. You mm-hmm. are a WWE product. And no matter where you go, you're going to be associated with that. That's right. Bottom line, flat out. So I actually, I think that's think- more of a perception thing, though. I think that's more of a, a perception thing because I think you know she's an indie. She started off as an indie girl, so I, I think wherever you meet these people is usually who they are to you. Is um, but I mean, I mean, I, I think she's known as the wrestler, though. I think that's why she lost so much in WWE is because she was known more so as the great hand. Than the person out front, you know, she unfortunately was there at the same time as as Charlotte Flair. So you know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't, you always got the the hand, and then you got the one that's the man. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what okay. her situation is, and I think that may work for like niggas to say, oh, she's more of a, a pro wrestling chick in general because she didn't really win at WWE. I mean, you can have an and and argument both ways but i think it's just really a, a perception thing wherever you met her in the road is probably how you, how folks are going to see it mm. and i think that's fair too fam i i think that that's an, a very astute observation um i think for me you already know how i am i look at it like show business and girl no matter where alfonso Ribeiro go that's called that's called <laughs> You can be Toyota Monet, Mercedes Monet, Kia Honda, bitch. <laughs> what was what was his name on Silver Spoon? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> we don't. He didn't have an ill name on Silver Spoon. I thought it was El- I thought it might have just been Alfonso. Damn, um, that's you know fine. how they used to do that with yeah. You know, like how is how Flex keep getting to be Flex and moves? <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Like I thought he had one of them deals. It's, what else? It's another he was it always Tommy. Tommy Ford always got Tommy, to be Tommy in movies too. Like how you? He 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 was Alfonso Spears. From seasons three to five on on Silver Spoons, God damn! Now I used to watch uh, Ricky Schroeder, but I never called it Silver Spoons. I no, called yeah. it Ricky Schroeder. <laughs> My, I could watch Ricky Schroeder. Yeah, nigga had a car bid. Yo, nigga. Oh, you had a car bid. No car bids. That kid was he was rich for no reason. What is that? Yeah, do? yep. Hold up. How did so they pretty- not do? How did they not figure out a successful Richie Rich live right. action show? Was he? Do- that could have been crazy. That's it was crazy now. They it would do it. It yeah, was now. I don't know if, if it translates well back in that time. I mean, what you would do it, and it would be it would be so ridiculous. It'd be like yeah. the kids living in Dubai and shit, right? Like if you're really trying to do it, like because this ain't gonna cut it. Niggas riding like these these trains in the house. You could do that at Walmart. Mm. Yes, the train in the house. I remember the train. I think you Ricky can tell what show did he pop up on? NYPD Blue, Ricky yeah. Schroeder, probably. Yeah. Did he pop up on something like so Somebody non-kiddish? This might be his ass. Mm. He tried to become, um, he tried to become what, uh, what's his name ended up being? Uh, Jason Bateman, yes, yeah, he fucked up. He tried the show was ill, but he maybe, <laughs> maybe, I, I, I don't, I, this is my memory bank doesn't start here. Make it, yeah, so it's a little I, I, you might not yeah you might not be old enough because i was very yeah, young so when it came up. it mm-hmm. it it had its last season in 86 so yeah you may oh. have been you may have aged out of that one what if is swerve strickland the ricky schroeder of aw 
Ricky Schroeder or Carlton no. Banks? Dana. Ricky Schroeder. I he can't. was a star of the show. Still trying to figure out if if there's any way to transition to that next level. Hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't think. I don't. I don't know enough about Ricky Schroeder, like yeah. outside. So Ricky, of... Ricky Schroeder started doing drugs, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, uh, that, that may have been part of his downfall. Like yeah. I heard, I mean, but I knew that the I knew the different strokes guys, but I didn't they were, know. Did I just lie, on Ricky Schroeder? What happened to Ricky Schroeder? Like? I know. <laughs> just punch drum. I'm just Wait, looking I, to confirm. Like the the man is born. He was in church. Low day. Start One of the few out of the closet conservatives he, he got, arrested oh, twice for dis- domestic violence. Oh God. Oh, God. Oh, he paid two. He paid money to Kyle Rittenhouse. Who? Oh, Ricky Schroeder. Oh, so so he. So I'm sorry. Ricky Schroeder didn't get into drugs. He's a, a right wing. That's what you I know thought. What, he was. Yeah, I mean that makes sense for the rich yeah, kid. Yeah, the rich yeah, kid is gonna grow yeah. up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He really Cam- Kirk right? Cameron. Kirk Cameron. Can- Kirk Cameron. Yeah, he was a big Christian guy too. too. Makes sense. That's right. He was. He was Bible man. Yeah. Bible right he ring. made Bible yep. movies. He made they yeah. make movies. And the other one, um, he was white too. Isn't John too, he was too, too. Facts. Yeah, <laughs> he was white too. Be before too, but that like because you like when you Christian, that's kind of how it's got to be, right? Mm. Bible man. Yo, what <laughs> the f is Bible man? <laughs> But uh, Kirk Cameron wasn't about he may have produced it. it. Bible Man was uh shit. What was the name of that show? Charles in Charge. Bible Man starred uh Willie. Willie hey, Ames. Charles, Charles in Charge's friend. Oh, his man. Oh, yeah, buddy. 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 Another one. Scott Bayo too is another one. Right wing. Buddy, his name it was Buddy. Scott Bayo's yeah. bad. I'm but yeah, Kirk Cameron, he has a whole Christian production company. He done, he's done Christian movies, but I think he was big in like the, mm-hmm. let me get all the directed to video Christian mama sales. Anyway, we are so. <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> again, again, DDM. This is why live and no live. You just, you just, you just say, oh, we on? We mm-hmm. just went. We went from from Mercedes Monet to Ricky Schroeder. Y'all doing anything for the? Like, I don't got a dog in this fight, honey. I don't even know who this man is. Like, <laughs> Kiki, that Kiki Wyatt mean? I don't. Who is this man? Who is this man? Who is like, this I'm man? Sorry for this man. Y'all got y'all got plans for the fourth? Anybody grilling? Y'all chilling? I'm gonna be at the pool downstairs in my house, but that's about it. The pool I, and family vacations is coming. <laughs> Brother Fan will be like this. It's morphing time. I might, I might meet Brother Fam tonight um, down at the Fells Point. Um, we'll nope. Wait. You know? So just so we hit all the topics that we normally hit before I start this show, talk about figuring stuff out. Wu Tang. Had they figured out the Wu Tang dunk situation? I didn't know I need them. I figured that out. I know I need them, boys. Wu Tang getting dunked? Mm-hmm. Well, well, they're really bees covered. They're like bees covered all over them, so we don't really know what they look like, but we kind of want to. Well, because there was a there was a Wu dunk that was made, but they were like, I, it was the Wu dunk, and it's what the undefeated fours. I think are the rumors of uh, Nike supposed to be bringing those back, and it's been a, it's been. Rumors. Well, but it's the question has been why, and I think people forget that like yeah, there were Wu dunks made. How many people have you ever seen actually had them on that was not a woo member? Man, like right. it, it, you it's, know, homeboy got in trouble for making those. Those were exactly supposed be, those are supposed to be the Iowas, and then and, and he and put the Yamin like, on it. And so mm. yeah, I don't. But hey, listen, I say F it, man. I'm down with red throwing everything. Ex- exactly. Throw everything out. God dang it, I want my pairs. I need my god dang Wu Tang. Mm-hmm. I need my goddamn galaxies. I mean, all of them, nigga. You know what I mean? Don't know, make <laughs> eight million of them, Nike. Well, that that's Put the that's the thing. Who work over in Vietnam. I'm sorry. You know, I I think the pro the people have been questioning what's going on with Nike after this week to start the show. Oh yeah. The the thing has been 
it looked a lot of people saying this looked like Nike is 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 not making the money they was making. And then I mean part of it makes sense. The sneaker game any sneaker reseller tell you it is not 2020, 2021. That game is going back to where and if you are right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you on game. Chat who is watching this right now. Right now is the perfect time. If you were ever wanting to buy certain pairs of shoes, you're gonna probably find them at some of the best prices right now. If I'm it's bad. If it's I something ridiculous, yes, I'm not talking Oregon dunks or or, or mm-hmm. any of those like PEs or anything exclusive. But mm-hmm. like, if you were trying to get a pair of black cement threes or like something that's like dope, Austin but pounds is like two something. A lot them, the industrial fours, the oxidized greens is is, no, is no, under no, retail. Don't you call them that got dang industrial fours? Well, I mean, you know, I no, I don't I, you do that. You know I was going. I know what they is. I was. I'm sorry. I was going by the name on that they put on the can. My fault. My fault. You know them got them. They blues. Now that's the name of the They dropped the. They dropped the pigeon dunks on sneakers. The shock drop I saw earlier today. It's, it's, the question is, the 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 oh, the gray ones. Matter of fact, hold up. Only the best, the rarest pair of dunks I had was the Nike books, the ones that the dunks that look like a composition notebook. Ah, uh, word, word, oh. word. But that was when people didn't care. Like, I got those back in, what, 2007, 2008, and I paid, like, $50 for them. And then I had the patent leather wood grain dunks. I paid, like, $50 for them. Like, they were incredibly cheap. Like the They going to be cheap. I just Googled. Like the Wu Tang Dunks, they only released thirty six pairs in nineteen ninety nine. Right. Um. So one pair sold for fifty thousand. Um, yeah, they're 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 mad rare. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Only thirty six chambers, thirty six pairs. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. now, now every now, if you wanted a pair, you could have a chance to get it for real. Well, but thirty six hundred. Well, that's the thing, Mimi. The, the the some of the conversation has been that Nike may not be making as many yeah pairs i and i don't know i don't know if that's to drive up the 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 the, the hype for them or whatever they, maybe yeah. they try they, they might be trying to make it like it was i think because i, I don't just, know if i, like I was thinking i was going to do do it in pre i was going to get them in pre because you can sometimes get it in pre pre-sale at the pre pre-resale you got to go to the right spot though right but because you know they drop it in Europe first, and then yeah. those are really the pre resales. You know, those be months before they even hit. Right, American but I have a feeling, or... based off of this history, it's not probably not even going to be affordable in the pre resale. No, yeah, no. Nah, if if you're going to try to get this before it comes out, you may be paying like four hundred. It may be like those. Uh... But I, I could do four. I'll do for but I ain't doing hey, I'm, nine. I'm, I'm not doing a thousand. I'm look, not doing that. Yeah, I don't think the shoe is worth that. Like, look no. at I think a bigger issue here, the reason why that market may be not as lucrative as it used to be. We have to look at and this is the thing here. You know, I'm a politics person. Uh-oh. The world is not in good shape. The country financially People are having a very hard time affording basic necessities. Is is that why the white girls Air Force Ones be looking like that? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) You know, like so. Where these motherfuckers out? Is it to be thirty six hundred dollars, a thousand dollars for a Nike Dunk? That's just Mm. that's for a lot of people just fiscally irresponsible and. The, like, like, what are we doing here, America? Like, really? Like, I mean, optics, I, it's narrative. Come on, it's, it's narrative. It's FOMO. FOMO is a real thing. People, although with that's where you go back to the um, fiscally irresponsible, where you don't care, you want them because you want to be that person to have that rarity, oh, and man. you will bet the whole thing <laughs> to get. That thing, bet that cable bill. You will bet that hey, see, no. cell phone. No, no, no. No. Wait, <laughs> bro, bro, brother fam, how much you pay? What's your limit on a pair of sneakers? What's on the box? Uh, a SB. No, no, that was that was the answer to your question. Well, but I'm, but what's on but the I'm box? So- You'll never you you so like if if they say in one ten you, you if they if the resale's one forty you're not doing one forty. If you really I mean, want to ship, I mean I I won't be I'm not ridiculous right. Mm-hmm. Couple yeah. something that could be shipping 
Or, you know what I mean? Something you give a nigga because he looked out for you. You know, you throw the nigga an extra 40, 50 hours. Yeah, something yeah. like that is, is, is reasonable. But, I mean, I'm not... I'm not I'm, I'm not jumping off a roof for no regular regular degular nothing. But um Word. I don't know. I, I I may get aggressive on the specifically on the woos the woos and the galaxies. Yeah, if it's yeah, if it's something I really, really if it's a pair of sneakers that I really want. I'ma do it. <sighs> What's the I, shoes is something shoes, I will spend the money. I'm and not just sneakers. The most I've spent on a pair of sneakers is seven hundred dollars. See, I can't do I. I'm not. I can't go over two. Oh, that's hard. Like you, the, that's, like high taps is like like the little the little. Um, nigga, these is two twenty yeah. on the box. Yeah, I know. I, I you and and, and you'll you'll do two twenty. Me? Yeah. The most I paid. They got down here. I did two. For one of my pairs of six, I think the, my name, no, yeah, no, my, my gray six fifties, when I got them a year after they came out, it was about $200. But like, I was like, yeah, I'm about, to, I'm, I want these shits. I'm about to throw that down. Most of the time, like most of these shits, mm -hmm. if, if, if I, if I got to go to 120, 130, that shipping better be oh wow $15. <laughs> You're <laughs> diligent. You're good. What is we on? You ain't got no dope dealers, no phones. Just go pay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just you just got eBay, oh. and you got the thing is you got to know you got to math will tell you you got to be patient, mm -hmm. but I think you really just got to know how to shop. I think you got to because that was a thing during the pandemic. It's such a sneaker game. Them sneaker price is going to go down. Mm -hmm. I paid them them Freddy Krueger sweater dunks that I had. I bought I bought them. Thirty dollars more than I normally would have, but it was because I wanted to wear them to yeah. Mania. Like there was a reason I was copping them. Three, four weeks later, they was at that sixty-five dollar range, and I, that is so. I'm telling you, I, I'm a sixty-four dollar month. When if I can get me a coupon code on Nike.com and it's free shipping, bet all day, all day. I've been looking for. I've been looking for a pair of in-store all white gum sole ones all weekend. Mm. Just you know, what I mean, if I do put something together for the fourth, that's the sneaker. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I bet, like Kyle, you were screaming in my sneaker collection and my shoes because two hundred dollars. <laughs> that's like, what I'm gonna do with that? Like, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to be like, oh, I just no, 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 no. I, I, but I think that they went. I you're diligent. You're good. But the thing is, I understand because in Philly, DD, I know DDM was rock, walking around and like six seven hundred every and it was multiple pairs i didn't it's but it's different stuff like that's the i i know i couldn't put those shoes on and do what ddm could do with those shoes i got i need my little basic 1988 looking yeah you know i mean and in, in, in a pair of green pants and i'm straight i mean hey, Cal, how is no pun intended. how is little cow with sneakers like because the thing that the thing that's that's, that's been the the thing lately is we wanted the, the same shoe. Like ah. when the 11s dropped, right? Mm -hmm. The 11s dropped, that turned the $200 sneaker into $400. Because you got it, yeah. Nah. <laughs> my my son, his are a little more basic. He, he, like, he's he got a pair of, uh, of uh, I don't know, it was an <laughs> or, orange, black, and white uh, Air Max that he's had for a couple years. He'll rock them all day, but he'll do like, you know, New Balance. He, he, he one day he really wanted a pair of Chuck Tails, like a pair of Chuck Tails. He must have seen them. But so like he, but he's like not even on. He look at me like, I don't, I don't know, Pop, that's you. He's just, he's, it, mm -hmm. we're, we're different like that. You know what I mean? But uh, we'll see what happens like in another you. year or two. I, well, no, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. One week I was down here podcasting, and then I come up, and this little Nick Rowe is in front of. <laughs> but no, you know on your stuff? Mm. So, yep. <laughs> mm, Y'all wear mm. the same size? Oh my Not god! Not yet. That's what he was saying. He was like, "Soon." Yeah, my son is my son is maybe a size. I'm really like maybe two sizes ahead of my son. Oh, I okay. Think, I think my foot grew. Mm -hmm. I don't. He yeah. he might have fit. Ten. He he, my, my son's a he's a ten now in Nikes. He could probably wear some of my eleven and a half in 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 a, in a year. So depending on how his foot's still growing, but I I, I 
He ain't never said nothing. I, I always want to tell him, you, don't worry about it. Go play the game. Go, right, right, right. Go, go do that. Don't worry. Don't worry about this headache. You don't want to be sitting on that eBay like, God damn, it was only ninety dollars. Why you ain't accept my offer? Like that's that's the. Yo, let me tell you, I sneak my shit in. I gotta sneak packages in because back in middle school, middle school, my son went from a size ten to a size thirteen. Oh, and oh so God. we went. Yeah, he skipped a whole one summer. He skipped a whole two sizes. And he a sneaker head too. He need him right. Had two, and I it was when I was at a job with two phones, so I had the struggle of trying to make sure I purchased both. Everything now it's not really, it's kind of like you get your allowance, you you do what you do, like you got to do that. I'm not doing that for you, right. however, if he misses a drop and yeah. he because we shared a goat account and he goes in and he sees, oh, you got that. <laughs> He be checking on yours. That's crazy. I'm like, that's oh, that's man, crazy. Sit your little ass down. We, uh, we right. Have a conversation. Like you need another account. Get out of here. Come on, the goat account. Right. <laughs> All right. John Paul Goatier. Matter of fact, it's funny you said that. Little fam just got his little bank account because he just got his first little job. Oh, so, uh, yeah. 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 Buy it yourself. That, well, that's the thing. His first full job. His first full job. You, you, you working? That shit is cool. You got your money. Get out okay, my. So get out my closet. Marys, did you get me already right on now? vacation? Oh, right. see. Uh-huh. He's already well, on his first vacation. Yeah, he's supposed to be in Houston, Houston, truck full of dollar camera, and then that rental. All right, let let let's start this show. You missed the oh you missed the world premiere last week. I, we knew I, he was trying to read me that one time. It was like you know, we're, we're working on multiple things. Things takes time. Now, I want to first give honor to God. Well, you know, all things are possible. I want to thank here he goes, uh, right. my black lesson fans, <laughs> um, the entire BRP universe wow. uh, for holding wow. me down. Um, my mother for giving me life. Look, look. Um, shout out to you, um, everybody you, you really in West Baltimore. Um, and I just love y'all. Thank you. This is so much. I made the intro. Oh my god! Wait, I wait. Was, I used the cunt picture too. I was here for that. The, the cunt picture. See, I can't. I can't say that. It was like, ooh, it was like, it, it was, it was, it was very much my press photo. YouTube, YouTube, <laughs> like, don't demonetize us. <laughs> I wanted to put that, um, the show, the the picture of you, fam, and Danielle in there, and I was DMing, that was uh, gliding Dan Danielle and asking her like, are you okay if I use this picture? And she never responded. Um, and we, I needed to hurry up and put the stuff in. I was like, oh my God, I'm sorry, y'all. I missed it. But I had to, you know, it, it, was, it was rough out in these debate streets. Yeah, DDM was working. DDM yeah. was out there having that people crying at night. Welcome back <laughs> to BRP. Been rocking with us for about 50 some odd minutes. You know, not only do we need a chat to make the, the conversation live, but God is still working on us. As always, it's your boy Cal. Peace to Maffy not here with us right now, but he here is with is with, with us here in spirit. I'm still fumbling my words. As you can see, the squad is on the line. Mimi. Say what's good to the people, yo. What's good to the people? Okay. 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 Booyah. <laughs> DDM. 
Oh my god, I feel like I already did my intro once again. Yeah, about that. Um, you know, it's DDM, the EST of DRP. I'm on my own against the wall. The pressure's building, but know that I will never fall because the crowd did hear me roar. And now they see I'm much better than before. I never needed you at all. Wow. <laughs> Champ. <laughs> Damn. Show it to him. Show it to him, god damn it. Show it to him. Shit, wait, hold up. I don't have it loaded. But uh, speaking of, sh- I hope he's in the chat. It's 4th of July, so he may not be in the chat. And I can't put, I don't think, I-, I made a video that I don't think I can play on here because WWE content may, uh, they may try and uh, flim flam us. But work, shouts to you yes. for bringing back the uh, the BRP50 sign. I think it was, uh, I was sitting at home watching Smackdown on MSG, and uh, I want to say it was shouts out to Queen Steph Hardy. She tweeted, she said, Y'all see that BRP 50 sign? Mm-hmm. I said, What? What? And I was immediately on the TVs. Um, I think this is, I don't, somebody on the timeline may have grabbed this. Shouts hey, out to hey, Ryan hey, Clark. Hey. Um, that's one hey, of the th- Ryan Clark, they really was, <clears throat> they really hopped in with WWE this week. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. It's smart. It's, mm-hmm. I don't know. I is he a wrestling fan or he was just the, he was just there because it was New York. I think I, he, he was there because New York because Fanatic Express <laughs> Fanatic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh right, because that's coming up in uh like a month. Oh yeah, August sixteenth. Oh yeah. July sixteenth or something like that. No August at the yes, it's mid August. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah there the was a, was there. That makes sense. No, that makes sense. and they probably have all. It, it ain't that hard to get there from whatever offices they had, they had over there i imagine but uh, no nah, yeah piece of work it was dope to see he did if you watch the show there's one point early i think it's like the first time you see um barrett and and graves having a conversation working as they would they was working trying to figure out what was going on it was this moment with ryan clark and he had the yami up for a minute and then at the very end after they murdered paul Heyman. Mm-hmm. And they put the, the 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 necklace on solo. We'll talk about it in a sec. Ve- the, right at the end, work said blue, and <laughs> as the whole bloodline was up, I was like, my man, my man. <laughs> if you uh, after you watch this, and maybe I'll link it somewhere. Um, we did have a conversation with work with a couple years back when he did the same thing on an episode of Monday Night Raw during a tag team turmoil. It was it was dope to see New Day in the ring and work was out there with the BRP fifty sign and, and and again I I didn't know till the timeline told me which is that's just real love I uh mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had to uh, salute work on that one but uh yeah I mentioned Paul Heyman who should be a uh, Emmy Award mm-hmm. nominee mm-hmm. At the, mm. it, talk talk about. It was it confirmed. I saw a bunch of rumors repeat, and I don't know. I don't know who or what to believe because one tweet will say something, and everybody will run with it. But the narrative that was on the timeline was that this man hadn't been sleeping; his eyes was all oh red, and, and they you know were he like, did it before. "He did it one time before where he had to come back. He did an interview. I can't remember what he was working on, but it was that the same sense. deal where yeah. he said he didn't sleep all weekend, or you know, twenty four hours without no sleep, no shave, don't dye the hair." And Facts. he did it again. And and yeah, you look at the picture from last week and it's a it's a different poll. You know yeah. what I mean? Look at his face with the with the with the hair on it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's pre thumbing. Pre thumbing. Pre thumbing. But then th- this is such a great photo. Oh my god. Oh, that I felt so day. I felt so bad up. For- I know. <laughs> she needs to wear compression. Yo, I was, was screaming in here. Screaming. Poor Paul, but I was dying. I he mean, compression socks. He got a that dent is not good. That means it's cutting off his circulation. He's a big guy. Well, I don't have. They didn't show a photo because I I watched when they hoisted him up. Like he's got a, like to be doing all that. He, I don't. I'm assuming he doesn't like he doesn't do. It. He don't go to the gym at all. He just kind of he meet them at the hotel. He Absolutely. meet them at the arena and he just be chilling the rest of the day. I don't know what he does, but uh, I'm. He going for a minute, huh? We not seeing him for Mm-mm. till 
till SummerSlam time. I think his marbles as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> I did. All right. Paul Denise Heyman is going to be out for a while. Mm-hmm. Last last week we had a conversation Not about Gucci. the bloodline. Mm-hmm. And, and and solos. I don't want to sound like I'm making fun of solo specifically, but I'm. I was trying to understand the fit, right? Because he had like last week. <laughs> Last week he had the red floor T-shirt, and then when he popped up on the screen this week, mm. our chat said, "Oh, he got Mimi." I think Mimi said oh, he got him in every color, That's but right. he like he was really on some coordinate. Like he like look at this. <laughs> look at the shoes. It's crazy. Yeah. So y'all better what? y'all better never talk nothing about Rock because y'all went in on Rock, and Rock was way more put together. He oh, had on custom. He he solo is giving men's warehouse everything about it. <laughs> this is Florida. House. It's Florida. Yeah, and it's the fit too. He too hippie for those looks. Like he looks like a security. <laughs> guard. He, he does. He he doesn't like a definitely. security guard. Respect the belt. Respect, the respect the ladies. Respect the ladies. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, Ooch. Hey, Oosh, no touching, Oosh. No touching, <laughs> He definitely looks like the underboss. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, the, pants, the way the pants are tailored, yeah. the way they fall on the shoe, it's very, it it's, it's very hippie, like you said. You got no hush puppies. It's just not it. No. But yeah, that's he Florida. Like he, going to a, he looked like he going to a, a family reunion banquet. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. Oh, we got to yes. dress up? Yes. Shit. Right. <laughs> Wait, no, me the black one. Throw me the black one real quick. I'm straight. I bought mine. I bought. I'm gonna wear the same thing. I wore the court. You know what I'm saying? That shit. Give me that. Hey, rep he's, pull that rep The me. funny part is he isn't the only fashion conversation here. No. The fashion conversation. If you go back to that first image, you look all the way to the left. There, there's been oh, a yeah. lot of conversation about that t-shirt. Oh, that t-shirt. Yeah. 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 It should no shade. When I saw that, I was like, "He got an MJF T-shirt." Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, it's just basically a flip. You just flip a couple letters, right? It looked just mm-hmm. like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, "What is it? What does it stand for?" Uh, Mother F and Tama. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's corny. They need to ask that real quick. That's dumb. I don't know why they, because it's not. They mentioned it a couple times. I don't know how often they've called him that though. They always right. call Jacob Five Two the can't, Werewolf. They can't. They can't, they can't. but they really in can't. having a conversation with Tama, I can see that being no. Call me MFT. Yeah, <laughs> MFT. <laughs> MFT. Don't matter, cuz it don't matter. Don't, don't worry about it. it. Don't worry about it. Put some red around it. It's because now Tama is Mexican. They put it yeah. there. <laughs> put some red around it. Don't worry about it. That's funny. Hey, look, I mean, they, yeah, y'all better stop playing with that red, too. Yeah. I, we talk about fitting them with that purple rag. Y'all better stop playing with that goddamn mm. red. That red Damn belt looked like it came from Suge Nighthouse. When, mm. when I saw him fighting and it was a red belt, I'm like, yo, he did that. He did that on purpose. Hey, yo, Randy, low key, what the, what's Randy eating? Yeah, Rand- Rand- Randy's Randy eating. Randy been going out with Seamus, yo. <laughs> Randy been going out with Seamus. Rand- but Rando look good, though. Rando he does. He looks solid, regardless. Yeah, looks, he, it's not giving Seamus. It was giving girl. You had Bob's big boy. You know, well, it was giving. You know, I'm just Bob's big boys on on, on Richie Highway. Facts. Yeah. Rest the, in peace. I do not live for Rando. Rando, his age catching up with him now. Well, it is timeline. <laughs> Timeline is I've seen images of him and Cody because they cool right now. But there's been moments where he's standing next to Cody, he looking at Cody Belt. I'm 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 assuming that that's happening soon. Take it from him. You be, think that's going to happen? Lit. He'll be a litany of guys to put Cody over in between whatever happens. Probably next year, Mania. Is is Randy Orton? I if he's in the sunset hour, if he well, yeah. let me ask a question. If Randy Orton takes the title from Cody Rhodes, is he going to be able to do uh, the Pivot Podcast and whatever other shit Cody Rhodes has been doing this week? Pivot Podcast. Why is he on that? I think because of the documentary. 
because of Fanatic Fest. I'm trying to tell you, these niggas. Is <laughs> and I did see that. I did see that. Fanatic right under it. They I are put. They are they were powered by fanatics. I didn't know they, that. They are yeah. fanatic. That's what I'm saying. He was. They got Hogan there and everything. Yeah. I was like, yeah. what? Oh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Damn, that documentary dropped. I, I uh, sh- M- M- Maj hit and said, "Yeah, I can't wait ago. to hear your thoughts." Uh, you you'll hear my thoughts about this at some point. I, it's an hour long documentary that dropped an hour ago. Oh, it dropped today. It dropped mm-hmm. today. Yeah. Yeah. On uh, YouTube. I I may could be cajoled into watching on the Patreon if you go patreon.com slash black wrestling pay that one pay that ten. I could be cajoled into watching that for the with the people getting the honest reaction. But uh, um, yeah, yeah I think he. He was talking. He was talking a lot of that on the Pivot podcast specifically. I, I feel like they they had them all on the on the the press run though. Liv was talking to Sports Illustrated. Javon Evans was Javon. Shout out to Javon Evans. He he told Sports Illustrated that his breaking moment getting to the WWE was wrestling an elimination match at. Uh, for the culture, uh, GCW for the culture in Los Angeles last year. He said there was a WWE talent scout that saw him there, said, hey, you ill? And then now he's wrestling in a oh, fatal okay. four-way for the for the NXT championship this weekend. It's kind of, what, what, a, what a difference a year makes. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Javon. 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 We'll Javon. talk about we'll talk about that Javon. stuff later. Hey, um, don't Javon, don't Javon sound like your cousin? Don't, don't never let it, let his life get together. You like facts. Yeah. You know, Javon. Javon. That white girl. Javon. You know, Javon was with that white girl for too long. What's what's Javon doing? Javon on that game again. <laughs> Javon. 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 Speaking of which, y'all notice the wild. Fi, yeah. ain't no, ain't no, ain't the <laughs> it's that time. It's that time. That 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 Elden Ring and has been kicking my son's ass, but I don't think I'm allowed to talk about that online. Mm. He he don't want y'all to know about that. Mm-hmm. Nah, but um, before we go to another topic, I did want to ask because they they went to MSG mm-hmm. to murder Paul Heyman out the bloodline. I. Mimi, yeah. Maybe I ask you first. How soon? Because I this feels like I, at some point the tribal chief Roman Reigns is going to have to. Oh, I, I guess I could just call him the tribal chief, right? Now. I don't know if I can call him, or just call him Roman Reigns. I don't know if I call him the tribal chief. He's there's going to have to be an answer to this at some no, point. I'm tribal chief wears velvet now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your tribal chief. Look that at your my, tribal chief. That's now, not my tribal chief. How how soon do we think <laughs> Roman Reigns is gonna come back and 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 take on or at least ask Solo Sokol what the hell he did this for? So RP Sika. Um mm, RP Sika. Before that um unfortunate event happened, I thought he was gonna come back sooner just based off of me watching what's been happening. Yeah. I was like, it, this kind of feels like it's not necessarily crescendoing, but kind of like it's, it's, it's built into something. It's building up into something and it feels like something might happen at SummerSlam. But yeah. now I don't think that, I don't know if that might happen. He was out and about. Um, yeah, he was moving. Yeah, he was still moving, still doing appearances and stuff yeah. like that. So, like, I I don't one thousand percent know, but I was I, I was feeling like he was coming back for SummerSlam, right. um, maybe because that's like what that's that would be a month ish, and so maybe that I say a month. I don't know how long you can keep. You can't stretch it out unless unless they really want Solo to cook and develop, and but then. I feel like he was doing a good job, but Paul was there. So now Paul is not there. Right. Do they let him continue to go on? Let these four continue to go on and see what they do, or do they um, can let them go on? And if it feels like okay, we need to, they need help. Do they bring them in? And I'm not saying that they can't do it. Right. I'm not saying that they can't do it, but because um, I I was very surprised that Solo has gotten here. After being quiet for so long, yeah, he's he's commanding a bunch of 
mm-hmm. a bunch of beasts that murder wise men. Yeah, I, I could, I, I, I think we're getting the triple threat match, or the the the, the six man tag match at a uh, Money in the Bank. I feel like at a certain, as you can see, the pairings always end up being Solo and Cody. Mm-hmm. I you you mm-hmm. I, I feel like we could see Solo Cody in a SummerSlam main event if they really wanted to, and I'm I'm assuming Solo wouldn't win that match, but I I think that could be a time where either a Roman song hits or something happens where you introduce this element because that well, if they're going on the trajectory, I think they're going. We could be getting bloodline, bloodline, and Survivor Series. This feels like the perfect. You know what I'm thinking? I'm fa- can I fantasy book real quick? That's mm-hmm. what we're doing. Okay. So here's in in DDM's mind. This is how this would happen, right? Uh-oh. Oh, I shouldn't be sick. No. <laughs> so here's what happens. I agree with you. We have uh, Solo versus Cody SummerSlam, right? Uh-huh. Jimmy Uso causes Solo to lose. Oh, gone because in order to have bloodline versus bloodline, you got to get the brothers back together. I like you, that. You have to reun. You have to. They have to make a match. United. So you have Jimmy cause them to lose because Jimmy needs revenge on what Solo did to him. Right. Right. They beat him down. Need my get back. We have, we have we we have Jimmy say, "Oh, uh, Jay say, oh hell no, you know that's still my brother." You have time to build them getting back together. Right. So now they're still outnumbered, right? But you have that fodder feed, and also too, Jimmy and Jay are more experienced on the mic yes. and can feed that newer crew mm-hmm. some information. You know, trying to help move this along. Mm-hmm. You getting the ass beat, then that'll take us into Survivor Series. Then we have Roman come back. With Paul Heyman, we have our Bloodline versus Bloodline War Games match, right? War Games. Then after that, we have somebody, we have a certain person come and throw a monkey wrench into that. That certain person is The Rock. Mm. Okay. And then we, we build to our Rock versus Roman WrestleMania 41. I know it's far fetched. Nah. But if I'm writing, and, and this is just a high level overview, right? Right. But if I'm writing this story from a screenwriting perspective to take us into Mania, this is how I would write this story. Because right. the two brothers have to make amends, so that'll buy you a couple of weeks there. Right. Mm-hmm. But you don't have them make amends until after uh, um, SummerSlam because you can bullshit your way through money in the bank and up to SummerSlam with Solo the Bloodline going yeah. back and forth with Randall and them, right? Right. And after that gets settled, now we can enter the feud with Randall and Cody after they after they do that. So that's not you done got them away from now. Now you got the Usos outnumbered going against them. You taking that into um into Survivor Series, have Roman come back, but you got to have Roman come back before Survivor Series because he can't just show up at Survivor Series because this, then the six man tag has to has to make the, the War Games match have to make sense. This is all me fantasy booking, no, but yeah. storyline perspective, there's a lot of meat on the bones yeah. that you can do with this. And if I was booking this, you can successfully separate Randall and Cody and have them go off and do their thing. Mm-hmm. After SummerSlam, and then start to build the resurgence of the original Bloodline, and then by Survivor Series, you have your Bloodline versus Bloodline War Games match because I think that's a, a main event. And then we can go into building Rock versus Roman for WrestleMania 41. Because no shade, I don't want to see Cody versus Roman WrestleMania 41. Why would I see that again? We're actually going to see. I think we're going to see a tag team of Cody and Roman. Oh like my that. god. She don't like oh that. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. You know you never seen that TikTok with um with, with Michael Jackson's voice. Oh no. Oh god. Oh no. <laughs> I, I I I think Brother Fam is right. I at a oh, certain point no. they, they always do it and but and I, I think the key is is mm. Ro- it feels like Rome is gonna have to be dealing with family business before he's gonna have to deal with that title. 
He lost. Facts. Roman doesn't need that title. No shade. Roman don't need it no more. Roman don't need no that shade. title. The title ain't been given since Kodak had it. And you mm-hmm. know, I'm not against Kodak, but. See. When, Clearly, because you had his shirt on on <laughs> Secretary of Chain last night. Well, that's because yeah. it was clean. I saw you. Yeah, I got everybody get a shirt. I got a shirt for everybody. Mm. I don't. I don't. I got a CM Punk shirt. that when I'm going out walking and working out. So he got a new oh, one. Okay, okay. Cody does? Nah. Punk, Punk got some nice shirts. That lightning hands one that's yeah. neon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you going to get it, Cal? Yeah. yeah a no. Um, I've not, I've not, I've not bought a CM Punk shirt since the Ringer, uh, white uh, shirt that ring, he had years ago. That's, but uh, no, I, I did buy. Speaking of shirts, I did buy. Uh, Impulse bought the Liv Morgan Dom Mysterio kissing one just because it said limited time. It's I said like, I. One? Yeah, it it looked like it's in yeah. like a it's like a photo. Uh-huh. It's a really basic design. It's got it's it's like a photo of them kissing on a black shirt. It's got uh-huh. her, uh, whatever. I don't there. really want them. Zelina Vega had on a shirt. It was her merch. It was a Zelina Vega Sega kind of. It was like ah. Zelina, but it was, mm, but it, was, like it was the episode of Raw, and but it hasn't hit the shop yet. And she had uh-huh. on. I was like, when are y'all selling it? Like I would, I would buy. That's just a hot shirt. Like right. why? Don't Did y'all see Zelina, Zelina talk about uh, going to the rub down spot at on? I I saw I spot. saw that clip. She said she was in Japan and wanted a massage, and uh, she is up she, at the witch dog. Yeah, she didn't. Re- she said she was. She didn't realize what was going on until the the directions led to some lady house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She said, and then being in, being in Japan, she was like, "Oh, I guess that's how they do it around here." <laughs> they, was like, they was like, "Do you need your do you need your DJ booth, uh, Ficky Picky?" <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. No, this was on the podcast. She was telling the story to uh, was to Dakota. Oh, Dakota. What? Yeah, was Dakota. Ficky. Yeah, was... Ficky Ficky is the. <laughs> Ficky Ficky. <laughs> it's gotta be. Selena. Selena, I like her a lot. I just think um the way that she's been booked, uh-huh. um, she's just been booked to lose. Like mm-hmm. you can never you never now the match with her and Liv was actually really good yeah. on Monday night. That was a that's that's probably the most credible and threatening she's looked in ring. She looked really good. Mm-hmm. Um, she looked better than she did in that Rhea match where she's got yeah, but I think also too that's because her and Liv are comparable in size. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you're not it's not unbelievable, you know what I'm saying? So it's that match was actually very entertaining. Um and I had an epiphany. I was watching Monday Night Raw and went to that the o, o, I went to the O's game on Pride night. They had a night for gay people. And um I was there, right? And um did, did they have hats? I think I, I think our fans are that savvy. They had, um, <laughs> Wait, what that mean? <laughs> no, pride, pride mean gay. What that mean? <laughs> it was giving out Oreos pride jerseys. Uh-huh. I gave mine to a friend of mine because I only had me to my XL. My big ass and I fit in XL, but whatever. Right. Um, and one of my um colleagues who's not gay, he's straight. He was there with his family in a suite with us, and he was like, we was he was at, he was talking about wrestling and stuff. He's like, yeah, I love Liv Morgan, and he's like a straight white man with a family. Great. And it was at that point that I understood why Liv Morgan they they continue to push her, why she has this fan base. Her look appeals to those straight white males who have. Like have that fantasy of the hot chick who's kind of like a little off and crazy. Yeah, hot it, to it, her. It finally, <laughs> it finally clicked to me. Yeah, you figured uh, it out. But me Ooh, being, I to me, saw that clip. Me being a gay black man, I just never saw it because I'm right, like, you ain't thinking about that. You know, the wrestling is like, eh. yeah. the, I don't, I don't the crazy girl shit. I'm like, eh. Um, the look is like she she live always give a look. One thing about her, her ring gear, she always giving you a moment. So I give her that. You can never say she don't give you a moment because she did. But I just wasn't here for it. But it was at that time that I realized I was like, okay, this is why Liv Morgan works. Liv Morgan isn't marketed or geared towards me. She's marketed right. and geared towards that demographic, exactly. and that's why she works. Hundred percent. Yeah, talk to it. 
still I, was like, I mean, yeah, listen, listen, wrestling is for niggas is cute to say online, right. but kids and white men are still the audience. They are going to get right. theirs. Yeah. And and and, and I it's totally her, understood it'll be her. I totally understood it now because for me, Liv and Zelina from a wrestling perspective just don't do it to me, even though do it for me. Even though I like, you know, Zelina and everything, I, I like Bianca, I like Rhea, I right. like, you know, Tiffany, I like, I like stallions, I want, I want, you know, Amazons. But Bailey. I've realized that for some of these men, they are looking at these women who are sexual, a hypersexualized. Fantasy gays, they don't give a fuck how great they are in the ring. They just want them to yell, toss hair, and look sexy doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I don't want to reduce. I want to be clear. I don't want to reduce Liv Morgan to that. Right. But I understand now why her aesthetic works and why WWE pushes it. I yes, but I I think they were leaning towards. Because this isn't the first time we've seen her kind of do this, but they didn't they didn't follow all the way through. It was around the time when they were trying to invent her, reinvent her after the uh, Lashley Lana program. They they were it was she was in the tub and she was trying to look all seductive and whatnot. But then they didn't really follow through with that when it was time for her to be presented in ring. It turned into something else entirely. I think. Now they've happened upon a, a, a program where she's able to use that stuff that DDM's talking about, but it's not just that for the sake of that. Like you can see that she's actually trying to scheme, whether it's getting Finn and JD tag titles or it's causing dissension or hell, getting Carlito to play PS5 all the time. Like she's trying to drum up something to get this squad to be all jacked up. And one of the things that she's using is her looks, her her, her sexuality, her her, you know, her ability to 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 woo. Look at them guys taking them photos back there. Mm-hmm. That that's who that's who she's wooing right now. Don't stop her at the at the at the airport. But she know that's why when I say Liv Morgan knows what she's doing, she knows what she's doing. She she's using that, but it, having it not just be that. And I think Olivia does a great job with um, her character outside of it is that in a little extra. It is a little something some extra there, right? Um, so I give Olivia kudos on that because I think she does a great job with that. Um, I am. Um, I, I will say this though, Dominic Mysterio. We're not giving him enough credit for what he's doing in this mm. because he is doing Dominic. I, I just want to say, as a person that started watching wrestling, November 2020, doing Undertaker's last ride in the Thunderdome. Oh, okay. And I have. I Dominic Mysterio is another one that I've got to see from the beginning. Yeah, let's talk about it. Wrestling. So to see when he was pure baby face. You know, very green in ring, definitely being carried by his dad, definitely getting that Nepo privilege. Sorry, Dom, love you, Dale. It was. But to see his evolution, mm-hmm. to see the growth, even the way his character looks, he's giving the character, and I'm speaking purely from a theatrical, from an actor's perspective. He believes this character now. He is living in this character. He's starting to, even the hair, he's giving that character mm-hmm. some hair changes uh-huh. as the character has evolved. I like this whole hippie in the woods, rocker <laughs> thing he's got going on. Mm-hmm. I think it's just Mexican. I think it's just Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But it's, I, it's, I, I, like, I, 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 I just say that to say it has been a joy because to watch Dominic persevere because there have been many of wrestlers' children who they have tried to push and they just do not connect. Mm-hmm. And he is really... He changed it up. He's pushing through. And, and, and you have to acknowledge that so kudos to dominic mysterio because he plays a big part mm-hmm. in um in, in this in this piece as well and i can't wait to see the the acting aspect of it when Rhea does come back and he has to play he has to answer to her like there's right. a lot of meat on the bone with him and the funny thing is he's not even wrestling like that no vision right he did wrestle he did wrestle the daddy he well, did yeah. wrestle crazy and talk crazy after that, but the, the the ill part is she's out. She got married while she was out. Yeah. 
it's gonna be interesting to watch uh mommy come back and has something to say. Like nigga, you got a whole husband now, cuz what you what are we right. talking His, about? We, we got pictures. <laughs> right here, we got pictures both, right here. The crazy thing is though, both of them got married during this. They're point. both married, yeah. They're both married. They're both, they're married too. Right. Yeah, don't married. Last year ago. Yeah. or the summer. Yeah. It was. It was before. Just got married. No, no, no. It was. It was before. It was before mania. But yeah, because they they started booing him when he tried to give his speech at the uh, reception. It was funny. It was so. It's interesting that both of them are married, and um, and that shows that Kayfee was dead. Nobody cares about that. Um, although Mark Henry did have a valid point when he talked about the Wyatt six, not the Wyatt six. <laughs> When he, he, was, uh, he, he did no shade. I, I actually feel where he's coming from. I understand. I understand it. In that situation with that gimmick, and like, how we go from that to y'all in the milkshake shop? Like, I was surprised. I, I, I don't. <laughs> I think where Mark Henry's coming from, it, it's it's just not looked at the same way. But I was still surprised to see all of them posing with some kid. I mean, it. But <laughs> now. I was I would say I, that is a bit of like antiquated thinking, but yeah, even with this kind of thing being the kind of thing it is, they was still like they, because they're showing Uncle Howdy and Bo having conversations, right? I I almost think that works with it because it's they're different. Shout out to Cuz, yeah, yeah, yeah. They different, right? They're so, they're diff- they're different, yeah. Uncle Howdy is never going to be at Burger King. You know what I mean? Like Humpty Hump. But right, right. <laughs> sometimes that nigga bully even a Whopper. You know what I'm saying? It's, I'm all right with that. I, I, I actually, I dare I say, Bo and Uncle Howdy feel more separated separated to me than Bray and the Fiend. But it may be because we've. Thing. Yeah, it, they, they're they're actually having those those videos where you're seeing them have that conversation. Although this past raw it looked like they were making that distinction that it, it's really he he basically talking to himself in the mirror, but uh, it's it it feels different. Hey man, shout out to WWE for purposing uh, VHS tapes. Facts, yeah. facts. Unpopular opinion. I'm already bored. I DDM. That's how I was last week, and I had to tell myself to chill. Yeah, and and that's and totally fair. It's, totally fair. Because it, it, but I, I, when I was thinking about it, I, I realized like I'm all I'm thinking about what's happening in five months or six months. You I, ha- I have to give them time to to let this cook. Is is my that's what I had to tell myself. You know what made me feel that way, mm-hmm. and I know it, it may be the wrong way to think. I'm I'm very very open to 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 critique on us uh-huh. but you know what took me out of it when chad gable came back the next week oh yeah he's yes. alive yes he did get shot in the head shot it, it was head. that was one of my questions yeah Wait, it's, it's, like when, when chad gable showed back up and stayed in this pro i know they harken back to it a few times but it immediately i was like in yeah. my mind i didn't want to say it loud right because i didn't want to just kill it right away but as soon as that happened, I was like, "Oh yeah, this is over for me." It's like it's like when uh, somebody would get injured at a pay per view, and they'll be like, "Yo, he dislocated his spine," mm-hmm. and then Monday, be like, "Oh nah, he just sprained his ankle. He was he good. <laughs> Don't worry about it." Like there's been a couple times they've over exaggerated. I, I this is this is when we get back to the conversation about the timeline booking osprey to win the title and all in or you know like the points where like you know you you because i'm all for fantasy booking but when you when you're presented an image of a dude with blood trickling from a hole in the front like there's no way i can't think he got shot he got like a knife stabbed in there or something like that he didn't even have a bad ball peen hammer yeah, it, the, the th- it's it's even if it's not a situation where like somebody took a drill and scooped his brain out, like I you give it maybe give him a qualifier two weeks later. Give it that week where we don't see, we don't hear from him to build the what the fuck just happened. Because then he came out this past week 
after winning, after wi- coming back and w- winning a qualifier for the pay per view, he came out this pack. We he still shook. Like they could have done that and then had the the match this past week instead of last week. I think it's fine. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it's going to turn into, but I do wish that when they present those images, they they wouldn't walk them back so quickly. Because that they, looked like made murder. A mistake. I think I think the the makeup niggas made a mistake in putting that circle where they put it. I think they were supposed to just drip some blood, but that jump was a clear circle. It was a clear, you know what I mean? We we didn't see the exit wound, but it looked right. like it. And that, and I think that was the <laughs> and I think they showed us they showed us that because they showed him immediately. Like they did him as they've been doing like the little NBA walk-ins. They did, you know what I mean? And I yeah. think their intent was we like no, we never said he was dead. He didn't get shot. It was just how the blood pooled from the um, invisible wound that he had uh, invisible stitches put up the heel before we went to TV this week. That's all he's That's a, all that happened. That is all he's, that he's, happened. He's a, he is not dead. He did not get shoot. The wide six don't shoot guns. They just he's an Olympian. He blows on brothers. the inside. Nah, but uh, yeah, yeah. it's a right man. I, I, and, and the thing is, I didn't want to be that person, right? But... Uh, you know, Chad Gable coming back, no shade, kind of made me look at them like, what is this? It's giving like, like I'm even looking at them like, girl, really? What? <laughs> so, Jesus. Girl, you know, then you got Nikki Cross, you know, working at Blockbuster, dropping off tapes and shit. What? I just. <laughs> do, do they ever explain? Because it'd be, it be security guards sitting behind them at the table. And then you just see dry ice, and then you look at the table next, and there's two dudes just dead on the table. They never. Who beats them like, up? I feel like it's a. I feel like it's this um, Stranger Things. It's trying to do this Stranger Things type thing, like that upside down world where they come in and everything looks morbid and dead and 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 spoiled and rotten, and then they go away and everything is okay. I think that's what they're trying to turn, in my opinion. It made me feel like, because I didn't understand it either. Uh-huh. And then it started making me feel like, okay, maybe that's what they're trying to elude. When one of them comes into the scene, it just kind of makes it, the world just looks weird. And then when they go away, it's all normal. It's all normal. It's 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 all ridiculous until... Uh, it's not. Know, un- until they drop off the package and then everything is cool. Right. I guess, I guess we'll see. They've got time to build it. Mm-hmm. Wh- whatever whatever that's going to turn into, I don't know, but uh we got time. We should probably hit money in the bank. Yeah? Mhm. This uh This is part 1 of 2 of wrestling ass weekend from WWE. Um cuz they're in Toronto. Yep, shout out to Miss Parker. I told him. I I said, "Look, if she got them them black forces on, you already know." And she put the sparkly ones on and beat me chin ass. Shouts to her. But let's get these. Uh, she look at these predictions in here for uh, Yamin in the bank. Saturday, seven o'clock. One of uh again, one of two pay-per-views going down this weekend uh first up i guess we probably should just look at these men's and women's money in the bank matches huh we got a uh for the money in the bank briefcase six men jay uso andrade chad gable number one on the brp 50 for 2024 carmelo hayes drew mcintyre and la knight Predictions, please. Who y'all got? Let me know. Mm. Mm. It's a tough one. Mm. I'm gonna go to Jay Z. So now with this picture, this picture, this picture tells you who ain't going. Win. They put them on the yep. sides. <laughs> yep. mm. They said, "Stick them over there. Stick them over." There. Damn, absolutely. Man. I yeah I Mimi you said Jay Uso, I'm gonna go with Jay. Yeah, I uh, shit. <laughs> nah, cause I've been on that Jay Uso ever since he declared. I'm. 
Yeah, I'm sticking with Jey Uso. I'm going with Jey Uso. DDM, fam. Um, at this point, I don't think I'm ever getting the belt back, so <laughs> I ain't going to overthink it. I got drop fam just belt off too. Facts. Um, I'm going to go with Big Daddy Drew. You know, that's my husband. Okay. Mm, I'm going to eat in the bank. I'm going to eat in there the bank. Go. There you go. Hopefully, we'll uh, told you the maps to get his picks in. Uh, well, hopefully, we'll get them soon. Let's just go to the other. There's only five matches on the show as well. Uh, women's Money in the Bank. Mm, Shouts out to Naomi for qualifying. What you say, fam? They did not do that with this picture. They did yeah, they not do the same thing. With they this did not do the same I, thing I with this picture. I honestly don't know who's going to win. This is an interesting one. Yeah, we got Naomi. Zoe Stark, mm-hmm. Chelsea Green, EO Sky, Lyra Valkyria, and Tiffany Stratton. Who y'all got? This, this match is presented hard. by the boys. That's interesting. This is so hard. <laughs> I guess yeah, both of them are. I didn't, I didn't realize they were both presented by the boys. It's funny. That's a good show. That's a good show. Uh, I'm going to go with Chelsea Green. That's a, that's a strong You're right there. Right? So you got to be a Chelsea Green. Green. I, yeah. Know if he's doing a redo on that one. No, no who you got, DDM? I would love, from a character's perspective, I would love to have Chelsea with this briefcase. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it would be so much fun. Hmm. Um, this is really a showcase of new talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, with the exception yeah. of Naomi, and I want to say EO, but EO won last year, so she like, oh. that title, yeah. But and I don't think she's going to win again. But EO is there to provide the wow factor or spectacular spots in the ladder match. Facts. Facts. Um, Naomi is there because we need a black lady, but also two she's a veteran. Um, mm-hmm. Zoe Stark, they're trying to give her some some opportunities and some looks. Yeah, she's going to have to really kill it to stand out. They are really behind Lara Valkyria for some reason, and yes. she just don't do it for me. But the company is she's high nice, though. She's yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, it's not connecting with me. But they're pushing her. I really would love to see either Tiffany or Chelsea with this briefcase. Mm, yeah, That's those. what, from a character perspective, I would love these two with the briefcase. Naomi ain't winning. I, she just ain't. So, um, so who you picking? I know. I'm always wrong. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Really, you, you really took the tunnel instead of the bridge. <laughs> um, it's down to Tiffany, and um, but they might fuck around and give it to Lava because they try to force her down our throats. Yeah, I um, think she, she's definitely the dark horse in this one. Um, but she, yeah, and she didn't win Queen of the Rings, so exactly. Um, I want to say uh, Mother Green, but then Mother Green would have to cash in. But then again. Every woman successfully cashed in for the most part, so she could be the first woman to not cash in. Yeah. Because usually with the women's uh, money in the bank, they always are successful with the cash in. Um, you ever seen Princess Bride? My man's trying to talk his way out of drinking the drink <laughs> with the IK powder in it. You know, I love lady wrestling, so, so I, I can't I, choose I, a dr- wine in front of you. I clearly can't choose the wine yo, in front the, of me. We gotta get. We gotta get the Jeopardy music, yo, for the picks. Oh yeah. Wait, do I have any? I'm sorry, all right. Um, I'm gonna go with Mother Green. Okay. I'm gonna go with Mother Green. That's who I assumed you were gonna go with. Who you going with, Mimi? Did you choose? Did you choose? I'm going with Tiffany Stratton. Oh, I love that choice. I, I hope that I, I wouldn't be mad if she won. I was gonna go Chelsea Green, but there's, I, I, it, it, it may be Tiff Stratton. I'm gonna go with Tiff. Word, it's a smart choice. It yeah, definitely fit. Both of them make sense. For the case facts, yeah. It it definitely feels like uh either one of them could uh do what they. But and, you know what I love about this match? Not to cut you off, Cal. I'm sorry. Yeah, go go. What I love about this match is I love that I can't see for sure who's That's right. right. It's definitely I love that. it's more right. wide open. That's yeah, I love it, that. It feels like it's uh, more of a wide open bout. Uh, next up. I wonder if they got the drones out for this. Sami Zayn is going to be defending that IC title against oh. Braun Breaker. I don't care about this. Really? Mm-mm. Why do they got Sami so hairy? <laughs> Yo. 
Who could do? Hey, I seen another video of Sammy today. Sammy's my nigga. <laughs> Oh, what do you look like? What do you have on? Nothing. Well, he had like sweatpants on. She said, nigga, the revolution first. That's my white boy. That's my white boy right there. Yeah. If the revolution pop off, I'm going to kill him first. Yeah, he, he said, said crackers. No, I mean, he, he said, you crack ass cracker? <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't make me find the video. Do not Please make me find it. Oh, see, here we go. Sammy. I don't lie. Sammy, because I saw him with his wife and kid, he's not my husband. But I kind of low-key live for him a little bit. I found it. Hold up. <laughs> Sammy's a legend. Sammy's a goddamn legend. S- Sammy Zane oh is God. a legend. It yes. may be time to lose Show that title. Show it to him. I don't know why. Um, um, yeah, um, I, think so. um, I don't um, know what they're trying to do with Braun Breaker. I I don't get him. him. I don't understand it. But I'm going to go with him. They're going to give him a title. Hold up. Yeah, yeah that's a dang monster. He's a Mimi said Braun. DDM said Braun. Who you got, fam? Yeah, yeah, I'm going with Rex Stein. There you go. All right, let me uh, hold up. What you laughing at, Kyle? <laughs> one sec, this one sec. Video. You're about to see it in a second. You're about to see this, in a goddamn f- second. Where the fuck is the video? Yeah, cause this the, the title is called Sami Zayn, the blackest man in Nebraska. What? I, <laughs> it's just the blackest nigga in Nebraska. It's just the you blackest man in Nebraska. Oh, here we go. Okay, one sec. I'm sorry. I thought it was gonna mess with me. What the fuck is this shit? Where the fuck am I? Hemingford. What the fuck is Hemingford? What is this shit? Bluegrass. How's a brother supposed to dance the bluegrass? I can't work this shit. I can't work this. Yo, I came over here, not one brother in town, not one black man. I'm the only black man in town. Yo, tell me that's not racism. Yo, shut the fuck up, cracker. Shut the fuck up, cracker. Cracker ass cracker. When the revolution comes, I'm taking you out first. Wait, let me ask you a question. Who Sami Zayn hang out with to say crack ass cracker like that? Right. Kevin Owens, that's Kevin Owens right there. When the revolution comes, Kevin Owens. Crack ass cracker. When the roof of the revolution comes. I'm taking you up first, motherfucker. Motherfucker. Yo, I'm sick of this shit. I'm going back to my fucking Black Panthers fucking meeting, and I'm going to school all these cracker motherfucking shit. And get some real fucking music. Yeah. <laughs> Who is that in the back? Uh, what? Had to be Kevin Owens. Yeah, well, Sammy, said, Kevin Owens. Sammy said it may have been a. Never mind. Can I get um, a Kevin Owens is my nigga shirt? <laughs> I'm I'm good. Next up, <laughs> Jesus Christ, six man tag match. Uh, Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens against three of the four members of the the new version of the Bloodline. Who y'all got? Give me uh, give me uh, Big Bouncy Yo, the Big Blood, facts, Big Thumbs, my nigga Thumbs. You know what I mean? My nigga, other day, yeah. <laughs> thumb line. You know what I mean? Yeah, thumb line. You know what I mean? We're going to go with fuck. my nigga, Werewolf. You know what I mean? Free, yo. And, uh, other, and, and other time. I'm going with thumb line as well. Thumb line is on the list of names of the episode now. Hey. Ficky, Ficky. <laughs> They're going to start, you know what I mean? They, they, instead of putting up the ones, they're just going to hold the thumbs up. <laughs> Put up the thumbs. Just, uh, Mimi, who you got? Uh oh. Hmm. My fault. This is a first. Yeah, I'm confused. You okay? I don't know what they're trying to do with this man. Who? Solo C <laughs> Color? Solo? No, the other one. I'm going to call that. Code. I'm say nobody name. I'm going to start calling him He Who Must Not Be Named. I feel like, I feel like I'm being lied to with this Randy Orton picture. What you mean? That ain't that, that ain't, ain't the him. nigga that was in that other picture. That ain't the no, nigga that man. was outside in that t-shirt. That ain't him. You know what? I I how did he end up with a team with another nigga with KO in the name? Now they go from bro KO to R K O. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, they got T shirts and shit. Yeah. yeah. it's real cute what they doing over there. You know what? You know what I want to see? I can really fight and I will dog walk your bitch ass. That's all mm-hmm. I need from that match. <laughs> hey, he needs to get showcased. He needs to have a a nice show, and and truth be told, he might have the most 
upside for anybody in the bloodline this quick. Like, he came in, the only other person I can think of that came in this quick and and looked legitimately like he's A, supposed to be there, and I can believe everything he's doing is like when AJ first came in. Stop. Mm, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. AJ didn't, he didn't sit in NXT. He, he came right there, and he was doing the thing. And really, he jumps off the page more than everybody in that, the, 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 the new bloodline. Look at him. Yeah, and he done got himself together for real? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this nigga's a terror. He's a problem. Hold up. Um, money, this is money in the bank. Money in the bank, six-man tag. I'm going to give it to the Bloods. Money in the bank. DDM said thumb line as well. I'm going to give it to the... I'm going to give it to... Co- I'm, no! I'm going to give it to <laughs> Randy. You gotta say <laughs> I'm gonna give it to Rand though. Corey Corey did mention on the show how uh how much uh people love Cody Rhodes and, and how much he's doing for the community and everything. That was uh Code Codeland Rhodes, Randy Orton and Kevin. Code Owens. Land. Definitely Rand Dell and Code. So the phonies. the last match on the card, I'm I'm guessing this is going to be the main event. Damian Priest defending that world heavyweight title against Seth Rollins. Um, I believe the stipulations are if Seth loses, this is his last chance to uh, try and take on Damian Priest for the title. If Damian Priest loses. He's no longer part of the Judgment Day. Oh uh, well, if that's the case in Damian Money. Yes, I, 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 I understand that. I understand that. I just yeah, like, yeah. want to have a, a credible opponent at at Bash Hmm. I just feel, would like for Walt to have a credible opponent at the Bash of Berlin. Not saying Damian not credible because in the ring he going to give it. But I want Walter to take that belt from somebody who I feel like, you know, I, I, you know, Damien just ain't. But if that's the case, wouldn't it be stupid for like Seth to get it for fifteen minutes and then go and give it? It's that's... now because he had such a great run, and it like that run, nobody will forget that run. So yeah, but... even if he has it for a hot minute, it doesn't matter. I feel like you you playing with that belt, like you you playing too much with that belt. You bouncing around. Yeah, I I. I do agree. I I think it's easier for Seth Rollins to say if I lose to you in this one match, I don't have to face you anymore for to the guy who's losing this title in another 3 weeks versus Seth winning, potentially losing the Gunther at SummerSlam and all Damian Priest has to show for it is looking like a bigger loser while he's trying to be the leader of the Judgment Day. I, I it, if if the timing was different where there was more time in between now and SummerSlam, I think you could have Damian lose it and somehow still look okay. If he loses that shit now, I I don't even want to see him wrestle Finn Balor. Give Finn the team. Well, yeah, I, I agree with that. And also, too, we keep forgetting about Bash in Berlin. And that is a Gunther. That is a Walter pay-per-view. Don't work yourself into a shoot, DDM, is all I'm saying. He probably going to be on the show. But we, I, 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 I just don't want you to be upset if Gunther either isn't champion or is it defending that championship in some like uh, some some blockbuster Euro? Because it could be a situation where Bash in Berlin could just be Gunther versus Jey Uso when he beat Jey Uso clean. No, I thought he had to. Uh, he, I thought he had to fight the the nigga that uh, the nigga for that belt. I thought. Well, I'm, I no Gu- at SummerSlam, Gunther has to have a title. But I'm oh, saying yeah, when it can get a ring. Okay. Yeah, ba- Bash in Berlin is. Prob- my thought is Bash in Berlin is going to be his time to be champion out there, but I don't know if it's going to be more than, look at WWE in Berlin. Check out the city of Berlin. Oh, look, we threw a show in Berlin. We had all these people, and now we're going back to Monday Night Raw with Gutierrez. Like, I don't think, it, I don't know if it's going to be 
as I don't think people should think it's going to be as like momentous and monumental. We're going to have to have the like they because they could totally say this match is not happening until goddamn Survivor Series or whatever the case may be. Has Gunther been on TV? He was um, when interview segments. And Damien and Seth. Yes. Talked about when Seth returned last and week. Maybe when mm -hmm. I tell you Gunther looked the fuck good. He, he had got, the same outfit on. He got his mic work together. He sounding better on the mic. Like it's giving credible. No shade. He's yeah, working. You know it's incredible, it's right? I, I I feel like they've put the best investment, especially over the last six months, in that man. Like mm -hmm. yes, six eight months with the, what they've made Walter into. It was I, I think even after losing the Intercontinental, um, he still kept going up. No, hundred percent. He he. I dare I say he needed to lose that title to get to where they're putting him right now. He did because uh, like we've been saying for some people, he didn't need that. He needed to be on this road to getting this world title. Um, I'm going Damian Priest. Mimi, did you uh, make a decision? I'm going with Damian Priest. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with Mother Dame, even <laughs> though um, LaDamian. 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 So those those latter matches may be the most interesting ones for our predictions this year. Um, and of course, we I don't know what math is doing, so we'll see. Yeah, that's our predictions for. Uh, he cheating. Uh, cheating. That's why he ain't yeah, cheating. He, he cheating right now. Though. He he, he, he cheating, over here stop cheating. fixing the books. Um, I did want to take a look because mm -hmm. the crazy part is that's the Saturday pay per view. Sunday they've got. A uh, heat wave, which looks like a monster. Um, after watching last night's uh, or this this past Tuesday's uh, NXT, they are ready. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to look at the matches for a NXT second. NXT is great. I did not like that promo Lola Vice cut last night, though. Yeah. It, it scared me a little bit. It was very. Which one was it? It was a um, in, in NXT Lola and um, Roxy had a um, a face off and rang, you know, little little face off and Lola that's where her deficit is Miss Mamas need a manager she's not, to, yeah she's not a talker talker yeah mm. she, she is not a mic girl because Roxanne and, and and I don't know what happened but I felt like Roxanne ain't even try to save her even no shade she let her kind of drown a little bit out there um, um well I I think I think Roxanne I feel like back. Roxanne feel like she uh she she's not losing that title, so uh, I think she may be good. But it's gonna be a dope show, though. It's gonna be a real dope uh, Sunday night pay per view. You figure you've got this is this Sunday night coming. This is Sunday. Yeah, this is this we is we got the, a double whammy. We've got yeah. we've got Money in the Bank Saturday because they're both in Toronto. Money in the Bank Saturday and uh, I, SmackDown Friday in Toronto. Money in the Bank Saturday. Heat Wave Sunday. I don't know if Raw's in Toronto on Monday, but they very well could be. But uh. Yeah, I mean, obviously some of the, the biggest matches. Kalani Jordan and Sol Ruka in a match for the uh, NXT Women's North American title. I did like the uh, the vignette that they had for Kalani this week. It's probably the most I've ever learned about her. They showed a lot of footage of her gymnastics and her talking about her mm -hmm. her her journey to, to NXT and whatnot. So the, at the very least, they're going to be doing all types of uh, crazy flippy spots. Um, Oba Femi versus Wesley. Another uh, last chance match. If if Oba wins, Wesley can never challenge for the title as long as Femi is champion. Literally the same stipulation that uh, Seth and uh, what you call have, which either means that Wes is going to win or Oba's winning and then losing it in a hot cup of coffee. Uh, we spoke about Roxanne and Lola, a singles match for an NXT Women's Championship. <laughs> I feel like Roxanne's got that. The Fatal Four Way match, I genuinely don't know. Yeah, I mean they, it's it was it started out as Trick versus Javon because Javon won the number one contendership from that that battle royal, and then last week they ended up adding Ethan. Why? And so, I rock. Maybe. I, I I was hoping we was gonna. I was hoping that Trick was gonna be able to start to do uh, what he what some other folks have done for him. But uh, either way, two things: one, 
It's a great platform for Javon Evans. And two, mm-hmm. it may be easier for Trick to to win this. Just knock everybody ass out. Just pin pin one. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. <laughs> he 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 he, may, he might as well just be part of the uh, the theme song at this point. Yeah, because I ain't gonna lie. When the song come on, even when he'll say it, I start saying it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> Shouts out Booker T, yo. Shouts out Booker T. Um, yeah. So that'll be Sunday. Uh, it's this extended uh Fourth of July weekend. A round trip to Germany. Sorry, I cut you off. Around- no, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead. Because I was looking at flights for bad shit Berlin. A round trip to Germany. You can get a round trip to Germany for about eight hundred bucks. Ah, uh, wait, hold up. I, I I do want to see Bash in Berlin 2024 wiki. When but is it? I was I'm, 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 I'm pulling August up the. Uh, so this is the pay per view after SummerSlam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are we doing SummerSlam? I will no, like. I'm you know, not. I'll be there. W- work has got me going to SummerSlam. I don't know who all is else is confirmed to go. Mimi sounds like she's not going, but mm-hmm. I should be in Cle- Cleveland. Do you know they uh they have chi- their chi- they put chili over uh uh pasta noodles like spaghetti noodles? That's stupid. That's the, that's one of the anyway. Um yeah, so Bash in Berlin, <laughs> August thirty first, twenty twenty four in Berlin, Germany. <laughs> no match is scheduled yet, but people are assuming obviously you see Gunther is prominent. They could probably have all these people on the show, huh? Assuming mm-hmm. Rhea's back at that point. Yeah, anyway. she's definitely gonna be back. We'll see. I would say they're definitely giving other girls room to shine mm-hmm. in the division right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Bianca is not. I'm not gonna say she's not prominent, but she's not automatically in stuff anymore. Charlotte's right. not around. Becky's not around. Bailey's the champion, but she, it don't feel like it. Um, and she needs uh, a story, and um, so they are giving a lot of these other women time to you know build themselves, but mm-hmm. it's moments like these where you really realize who's really a star. Facts, facts, like who's really a star. And Charlotte Flair is really a star, you can feel that hole. I was hanging out with That's um, so crazy. I know. I came to Baltimore this weekend uh-huh. with my um, with V, uh-huh. and um, we were talking. I don't know what I forget what we were talking about, and she was talking about Oscar, and she uh-huh. was talking about Charlotte Flair, and she remembered Charlotte's name. Oh, okay. So somebody that just saw her one time on the screen maybe she saw her twice i don't really she, remember she connected enough she connected enough to say the dope girl the girl that came in there all fly charlotte that girl charlotte right and the right. asian chick oscar yeah those are my favorite they're gonna be at the summer slam <laughs> charlotte i i don't know what charlotte's time frame is i did see a video of her in her uh rehab mm-hmm. and she was hooked up to one of the machines and yeah, she she was kicking her leg and shit. Yeah, and, yeah. And it looked mad intense, like but like she was moving that leg. It looked like she was she was. It reminded me of when I saw Mercedes in that ring back in January or February, where she was tumbling and like it looked like she's getting into into shape. So, <laughs> SummerSlam is right around the corner. Berlin ain't that far. I could see Charlotte probably making a return uh, before the end of the year. I was gonna say, oh, this is probably. I don't want to say it's the wrong crowd, but like I don't know what the NBA quotient here is. I did, I I did hear because this was a part. Mm-hmm. This was the other part of SmackDown on Friday. They had uh, NBA players Tyrese Halliburton and uh, Jalen Brunson in there. Apparently, there's supposed to be more to this. Oh. Well, Tyrese Halliburton got a shirt on WWE shop. Yeah, yeah. Well, was it Jalen Brunson? No. What? Yeah, Br- Brunson. Brunson yeah. got a shirt. Yeah. Br- Brunson got a shirt. They were both involved in this uh, L.A. Knight, Logan Paul ordeal. But, yeah, I, I'm not too versed on what Tyrese and Jalen's situation is on the court. But it sounds like whatever beef 
it's going to be handled in the ring. It, yeah, I, I, and again, I don't know if that means that this is the... Because I was assuming that Logan Paul was dropping that U.S. title to L.A. Knight in Cleveland. But maybe this is the match that they do in Cleveland. They have some type of NBA affiliate mixed tag. You know, I don't say mixed tag, but... I don't know how, but uh -oh. I am very annoyed with how they've done L.A. Knight. And I, 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 and I know he's not everybody's cup of tea. Talk but when it. the person manages to get themselves, we always say, well, you have to do something to make yourself get over. Uh-huh. He did that. He not making fun of you, Mimi, I promise. <laughs> he, he did. did. It's Well, because that's what Mimi has said, but I don't think he, he's... Uh... He, he did that. He outlived that terrible Vince was getting ready to push him into manager territory. Right. Maximum male models, which yes. was first class exit to being released. And he really made it work for himself. Mm-hmm. And even now, he's still sustaining to a certain degree that people are still hanging in there with him. And the fact that he, L.A. Knight, should be a U.S. title holder. I figured this was it. I'm yeah. hoping that match still happens. And and you still got it on Logan Paul. I get it. But I just think it's criminal. I, I think it's ageist. I think that it's... it's, it's cause they, they, they're saying that because... Oh, well, he's not a top guy because how many years we going to get out of him? I get it. But he should have the U.S. title belt. He's earned that. He deserved it. He's proved that he can actually You give him a good story. His run with Cameron Grimes at NXT over that um, million-dollar title. I'll never forget that ladder match that they had. Great work. Work. Great work. I don't know why. It, it, it kind of gives me... Um, Zach Rodder tease a little Damn. bit. Damn. Mm -hmm. That's what it is be, where he has set in oh, and wow. got, he's gotten himself over. He 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 does great in ring work. He cuts a good promo. Like what what more do you want from the man? Mm -hmm. He's proven that you don't have to like him, but he's selling merch. He's gotten himself over. He does great in ring work and he does a great promo. Now the fact that he's from my home state, yes, I am. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm not even. I'm not even putting that on you, but I, but but I, there's a case to be made that what are y'all doing? I I think DDM, and, and this is this is the most perfect 360 completion for our conversation. Maybe they're doing the same thing that they doing with Swerve with this person where maybe it's a situation where this person can only go so far. I don't know what, well, I don't know what LA Knight's trajectory is. Like, I don't know what LA Knight's trajectory is. I don't think he, it's the same thing because Swerve ain't moving merch like LA Knight. Swerve ain't, ain't, it's not giving the same thing. LA Knight's not moving past where people thought he should have been last year. He's actually gone backwards. But that's, and I don't think that that's his fault. I, I think that he is doing everything that he can, but you got to give the man something to work with. But and this is my, this is my point. This is my point. You're talking about LA Knight in a world where there's a bloodline. Mm -hmm. There's, and I love using big, there's a cacophony of dope women on his show. My, <laughs> remember, LA Knight's on the wrestling show. Mm-hmm. At some point, he got to do something better than Jay Cargill. Well, he, he got to, no shame. No he he shame. got to be more important than Solo Sokoa and them. I don't think he's it, important enough to hold that U.S. title belt. That's where it's stuck. He needs maybe that. that's where this is going though. That that's that's my thing. I I could see. Follow me. Maybe this is the SummerSlam match. Maybe because SummerSlam used to be the big pump. They were throwing that shit in Hollywood, trying to make that one of the, the like the big two. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is part of the allure of SummerSlam being a big fiesta. And then y'all would talk about Bash in Berlin. Maybe LA Knight goes to Berlin and wins the US title off the strength of whatever happens here. I can see it happening. I, I think my thing is. You mentioned ageism earlier. A lot of the time, people really only see it for certain people at a certain time in their life. Because they think, shit, this nigga 42. What's he doing next year? He, he His knee may not work. Mm. 
Maybe his mean, eyes is going bad. I, but I, I, I wonder if there wasn't so much going on in this ecosystem. I'm sorry. Maybe LA Knight would have a bigger shot. Maybe he would be U.S. champion right now. Similar to Swerve Strickland, where he may be mixy and hot for what he's doing right now, but there's too much stuff. He's at a time where he can't only go so far because there's so much more important stuff at the top. I feel like this is a classic example of you ignore your mid card all the time because I don't understand. This man has proven that he can go toe to toe with Logan Paul on the mic. Not that he should even have to prove that because who the fuck is Logan Paul? He has gotten the best of Carmelo, which I didn't think would happen. Like, sorry, man, I, like usually when I when I'm defending somebody hard like this. I have substantiated evidence to prove my claim. Mm -hmm. And on paper and on on the, the show, LA Knight is doing everything that he can to get there. Right. And the crowd is with him. Mm -hmm. Give him the fucking bell. Like, stop playing. I feel like it's annoying to me because the, if LA Knight was 30. If he was 30. I feel like he would be treated differently. I agree. Mm. How I old agree. is he? Forty two, you said? He's yeah, he's like forty two, forty three. Yeah, he's uh he's up there. He's been and in the game for a minute. That it I didn't think that age mattered anymore, but I might be wrong. I I, I don't think it's because they I, 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 I and I can't quote exactly, but it's been said about him in WWE. Yes. He's really? talked about it. Yeah, he's talked about it, yeah. Oh, he yeah. has. Like he, he's like he's that. talked about because this is his second time you know he, he had a run and then he got let go and then he came back at with more experience more mature but mm -hmm. in wrestling years he's already at I, I, aj I, styles I, at brock lesnar at john cena age like they they don't see it because they're looking for javon heffins you know what i'm saying like they they want to see who can be developed over the next 10 15 years that's somebody who may have seven eight right and it's, I'm not saying he got to have the big belt, but right. you know, when a person you, you're printing yeah t shirts and, and they're selling, you're printing yeah vests and all of that. I, as a fan, I'm getting annoyed because I've invested in this man. This man is giving me what he needs to give me. Like, <laughs> why can't I purchase my LA Knight side plates? You know what's funny? Side plates, and I and I, I I'm not going to do this. I'm purely speaking on shit, but no shade. No shade. Jade is not giving LA Knight in the ring or on the mic. Or with our crowd reactions, if we're being honest. Honestly. LA Knight is not being carried by anybody either. If we're being honest, to counter your t-shirt argument, maybe all they saw was an investment on a moment with some yeah t-shirts. Because again, we talked, they, they got a shirt with Liv and Dom kissing on it. They put a, they put, I got a shirt with Becky Lynch mugshot on it. They going to make a t-shirt. They got the printers in the back. I'm sure of it. I, I just feel like I just don't like it. And as a fan, it's really turning me off. Mm -hmm. um, it's you leaving the pod? It's nah. I just feel like it, it is very, it is very annoying. And like I, that's why I said it's giving me Zack Ryder teams. Right. It's right. very annoying. And and this is why, and I'm really going to catch shade for this. This is why when people talk all this shit about Vince McMahon, I I, 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 I just be like, okay, whatever. Because people still, people are doing the same shit that Vince McMahon did. Everybody has so much shit to say about Vince McMahon and how he booked. And not saying that Vince didn't do some fucked up shit or some crummy shit because he did. Yes. But, also, too, it was a lot of value in the shit that Vince did, and people are doing the same exact shit. But because it's not Vince, they turn the blind eye to it and act like it's not Vince McMahon booking when it is. I, it's we're too close to the time frame where Vince is done and, and Paul Levesque has started. You feel me? Like. Even with all the change they've made in the production and with some of the, the, the thoughts towards booking champions and stories in general, you not 
you can see change. I don't think you can see real change. Like, like what? Like, I don't think there's going to be a time where our lifetime somebody's not going to be referring to some type of Vince booking. Like the, the nigga was booking for my entire think, life. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, you really like he just got he just got done booking like two years ago. Mm-hmm. But also, too, not even just in WWE, even in AEW. Some of the shit that Tony is doing right now is very Vince McMahon. Yeah, mm-hmm. if it's it ain't right. broke. So, but but that's why when people are like, oh, Vince needs to retire, Vince needs to do that. I'm not saying that none of those things need to happen, but motherfuckers are still revisiting the Vince McMahon playbook. Of course, I see it. I think I've seen it. Um, I was seeing this maybe on the buckle, or maybe I said this before. I feel like. I'm in a place where um, when I first came to wrestling in 20, when I first came back to wrestling in 2014, I, there was a whole two eras that I missed. So as the years would progress, people would be referencing stuff and I had nothing to reference. So now we're in this new complete era without Vince and I'm starting to see and equate certain things and i'm like huh i feel like i've seen this before right or this isn't anything new this feels like winds wash repeat type situation yeah so um yeah it's it's interesting because before i was like you know i can't i like this this is like i don't know what this nostalgia thing they're talking about but i kind of like it because i had nothing to reference now that now that i'm like oh okay this is what they was talking about and then people will post matches like yeah he did this this here mimi look at this and then i'm like oh here oh and then this year and now, now, like, it, I'm just like, oh, okay, this I got kinda, you. This kind of sound like Nike putting out woo dunks and, and right and, and, and all. Ag- retros. <laughs> what's what's old is new again. There's a reason why we got hypo for off of that shit because it works. Mm. The key is you gain inspiration, you gain influence from that stuff, but the mindset should always be. Mm-hmm. How do we flip it and change it for some shit that to add some stuff that we ain't seen before to right because it you can you you can't well not say no idea is original there's nothing new under the sun I don't know if that's true but it's very hard to reinvent the wheel right there's a reason why some shit works but uh we have we have we have probably talked y'all head off longer than DDM thought we would without a chat. In our faces, but I tried to tell him this is BRP, it's what we do. Shouts mm-hmm. out to Brother Fam, shouts out to Math. I think there's only one question we got to ask at the end of the show. Me, me, who's your black rass of the week? My girl, Jada. Okay. okay, she, I mean, I have to say, I think going down to NXT was really good for me, AM. Uh-huh. Um and them together, I think she just she reminds me of the chicks in the street. Yes, yes. Like she reminds me of the chicks that I went to high school with, like that girl. Thanks. And she will beat your ass if you even look at her funny in the hallways, and she will have something to say, and it's so authentic, and I absolutely love it. If it, she feels very real, very yes. real. DDO? Oh, it's definitely Miss Parker. Miss Parker, wow, mm. she really got mm. the uh, the uh, me out. Mm. Salt and pepper's here. I it no, that makes sense. Salt, makes, salt, makes salt. Salt, <laughs> salt, salt. And I was having a lot of salt, salt, salt. That's yeah. what put me down because I was like, ooh, maybe I'm. Let me get let me get three of these colossals real quick. Let me let pop this out. Let me find out. Mimi got two bush- bushels of crabs, and that's why she been incommunicado. That's crazy. I was, yo, I was in the car feeding, eating. V's looking at you like, girl. She she breathing. She breathing. All right, she breathing. She breathing. <laughs> that's crazy. My black rats of the week. I'm going with Javon Evans. I when I, I, I want to say that. Like, well, because the thing was like. Watching Javon Evans on NXT, 
it's not the same as when I first saw Trick, but it feel like that. Like Javon, Jay Malachi was somebody that was on our, our on our radar. Shouts out to Brother Matt for a minute. Um, and you see a lot of folks go from indies to the WWE, and you'll see them like switch their style up, or they may not they may not be the same person you saw that. That's Jay Malachi. He just got a different name because they got to have a name. He feel you know, the way y'all talk about Jada Parker is the way I felt about Trick Williams. And when I saw Javon Evans on NXT this past week talking about having to get a passport for this match and then seeing his interview with, with, with Sports Illustrated, like you, you, he feels like that. It feels like somebody who could be walking down the block. You know what I'm saying? listening to music getting ready for a game or whatever they just so happen to be going to the gym to be getting ready to wrestle like it it this is the part of representation that i like being able to see folks that look like that speak like that and then work like that in the ring main event and nxt pay-per-view i don't know i i don't i feel like i'm giving Shawn michaels way too much props but this is the type of shit i like to see i like i like to see him purposely throwing women and throwing people of color out there and, and, and letting them rock because that's what we need. Look at me, Sean. Look no, at really. <laughs> Look at me. Talk about. I'm over here, Sean. Look at me. Right here. Right here. <laughs> that's it for this week. If I say so myself, we recorded the tape, but another banger. Pie -ya. Pie -ya. We did that. We did that. Pie -ya. <laughs> me, me. Yeah, Where can yeah. people find you on them social medias? Well, you haven't been able to find me in a minute. <laughs> Incommunicado. <laughs> but you can find me right here. You see that right there. And I'm going to be back on a buckle one Tuesday at 6 30. Uh oh. DDM? You can meet me in the trap. It's going down. Meet me in the hunt. It's going that, 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 that. No, you found me at the damn night. Don't forget. Uh, <laughs> and all things going on in this fucked up world that we live in. Uh, visit me at youtube.com slash secretary of shade. I will be doing a special on Project 2025 next week. Yay. Facts. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Ho I don't know if there's going to be another debate mm. in September. Please, if, no. if Biden's going to be in that debate. But uh, mm. it was good to be done with the episode and then catch up on a debate. With all all the folks in the Secretary of Shade chat, because they was they everybody, I, well, because it felt like I don't want to say it was DefCon one, but it was definitely like yo, shit is real. DDM, let us know what the fuck happened and where <laughs> should I be? What country we go into before this shit really go down? That's right. Um, my cabinet, they always show up. For fact, <laughs> shouts to the cabinet. Um, shout out, fam at illfam seven on your social media choice. Don't follow math. <laughs> Uh, patreon.com slash black wrestling youtube.com slash black wrestling make sure you're following liking comment subscribing if we made y'all laugh once or some, some said some shit that y'all thought was real once during this recording hit that like button make sure you hit the subscribe hit the notification so you don't miss shit uh, I think that's it for this week back to your regularly scheduled nonsense next week I ain't got nothing else to say. We got to end this. But as always, New Jack, take us out. Like me or not, I didn't come up here to be 